Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a live reaction from MinMax. MinMax is a place about games, friends, getting better. This is a live reaction to the BAFTA Games Awards for 2024. My name is Ben Hansen. Thank you for joining us on such a prestigious British evening. Hello, Janet Garcia, joining as well. Hello, it's British evening somewhere. <laughs> that's that's right. So, <laughs> bottoms up, everybody. Uh, this is the BAFTA Games Awards for 2024, an event I've never been to. I saw... You know what, Lucy and Tam looking all spiffed up. Uh, they're going to yeah. be there from uh, the Giant Bomb GameSpot world. But I'm curious to see how this goes, because I've probably only seen highlights of this before. But we should mention at the top of the show, this is technically a sponsored stream. Uh, BAFTA reached out to us and uh, said, hey, you want to do a sponsored stream where you're watching the awards show? And I said, well, the Midmax community is always bringing up the fact that we uh, maybe are a little bit critical of the Game Awards at times, um, yet we don't highlight other awards shows. It's like, you know what, this is a good opportunity to sit back, Relax. Let's watch some good old-fashioned classy awards over here with BAFTA. How are you feeling about that, Janet? I'm excited. I've been involved in, like, elements of what the BAFTA, like, game awards, do like, like that kind of scene. And I've seen it a lot, obviously, from, like, Lucy and Tam, as you've mentioned. So <laughs> yeah. um, getting to see it in its entirety uh, is exciting. Um, I think, too, the time normally goes by quick in the sense of getting to just enjoy people enjoying their achievements and that's kind of nice mm -hmm. so i think it'll be a good like like just like a, a nice little vibe for an afternoon that's evening exactly somewhere. It. yeah sit back relax pour yourself a nice glass of wine or some water if you're feeling cool um they sent us over a little fact sheet which is nice for uh, just some odds and ends here and there but this is a uh, peer voted for who's going to be winning these awards uh with over 1200 Expert games professionals jumping in there to submit their votes, just so you all have a good frame of reference. Now, they do have other little factoids, and if chat is screaming for it, we can throw factoids all day long. Uh, number one factoid they share is Baldur's Gate 3 leads the number of nominees with 10. And 11 of the 12 performance nominees are first-time nominees. Hmm. Fun fact. Uh, now, Twitch chat, hello. Thanks for watching us live. Uh, they're saying, quick quiz, what does BAFTA stand for? We couldn't possibly be put on the spot like that. British Arts... Academy of Film and Television. Of course. British Academy of Film and Television Awards. So there you go. Hey, yo, Heidi, hi, but thank you. Uh, fancy people. Yeah, I hope everyone at home is very uh, dressed up and dolled up as well. We should have mentioned that. It's uh, It's kind of a... It's a gate that we have for getting in just to watch these awards, is you have to be uh, wearing your classiest get up. Now, Janet, you would presume this would start when it says it's going to start, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's oh my gosh. We already have people. Oh my gosh. Up. Speaking of Lucy. There are so many people. I don't know if you can tell from where you are, but this place is thronging with Wait the hottest games talent in the world. Can you just scrub and through this? How does this work? Lined up to talk to us. In David Bowie is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. Oh, the red carpet. Okay, so that sounds great, but let's let's go to this and wait for this to start. And in the meantime, we can watch that funky thing to see the red carpet. This is this is fancy. And and I had a blast uh, doing everything that I did in in. Let's know the, the volume is everybody. Of course, Acting, all this fun stuff. Dancing, music. Well, sure. I yes. mean, you really got to do kind of everything. Do you think it'd be fun to do a red carpet thing? You don't get to keep the microphone. No, yeah. sorry, these are ours. Goodbye. All right. Oh, so good. Narrative ideas and as it this is a game we're going to play where we like jump around, you try and guess and the developer the really, based know, on the way they're describing it. We were actually writing to picture, but we had a lot of time to develop ideas. We played a lot as well. I mean, that's yeah. the best thing. Like, you get, you get your you hands think? on the sticks and get to actually play the game. And that's the nice thing about game development is that I have no idea. Sort of <laughs> I'm like, who plans the their game? It could be anybody. The music is a piece guess. of that. So for us, we, we get to in, gradually see it come together, and at the end of it, see you see Lucy's smiling. It's an awesome feeling. What was the aha moment when you realized everything was really coming together? David, Lucy, that's not a hint. It's a um, game that came well, together. I think, you know, <laughs> generally speaking, there's a point where we, with most games, we make a big slice A good of game it. at an um, awards that, uh, show. You know what? This actually kind of would be nice, sort of maybe a nice tribute talent. Yeah. We've done it. Uh, and, and that, that uh, few weeks we've done interviews where we jump into a random spot in an interview and you have to guess it. We sit and play it all day. And, you know, it's fine. In the meantime, though, I'm going to go ahead and pour myself a nice glass. Chesses, would you ever host any of these awards if they asked you into it? Um, you go, you go, you I think I would. Then. I'd be really stressed about it, yeah. but I well, think I would do it. Congratulations again on your nomination. Thank you, thank you so much mm. for joining us. Thank you so much. What are you drinking over there, Janet? Uh, just some water. Hey, from cheers. the Brita pitcher in my fridge. Could you call it the BAFTA right. filter? Oh, 
boy, we I feel more we're comfortable. Just, yeah, the, yeah, the bad again. We're so sorry. We used to have a mark. And it's gone. I make my own mark, and uh, yeah, it's literally. here now. So <laughs> still unclear about that last uh, developer. I don't know. I mean, we've already spoken to so many incredible people. Starting at we'll 1 p.m., like they say. Everyone coming by. Jane, I want to ask you. Yeah. Your most memorable kind of fan encounter. Okay, here we go. Voice actor. Something that you saw that is really stuck. Is this Baldur's Gate? Yeah. Can we talk about the fan art? Honestly, um, it's it's so many talented artists. Feels like it. Something I was expecting. I I did a job and I did a game and I didn't know anything about fan art. I mean, I know what fan art is, but I didn't think there'd be (laughs) such a wealth of it. I don't think she knows what fan art is. And I have purchased a lot of it for my own walls. I do have. A Jahira wall, and I don't care what you think about that. I am really proud quick, of it. Google and, Jahira um, real quick, yeah, Janet. I'm very grateful. There's just very talented people. Yes, shall I? Thank you. How's it going? How's your evening? Okay. Very good, yeah. yeah. No, I'm very excited. Never been, in, been to BAFTAs or anything like this. So, yeah, red carpet, probably the yeah. first one. You seem very relaxed, though. Yeah, well. Is that just your vibe? He does seem really yeah. chill. Nice. This is, yeah, well, I, I went out with a bit of a hangover this morning, actually, <laughs> if I'm honest. So. This is BAFTA. You can I hear you may have been at uh, an arcade last night. Yeah. Were you at an arcade? Did you play anything? Uh, no, I watched. It's not a hint. Okay. Yeah. Actually, no, I did play Street Fighter, and I lost really badly. Oh, no. So, yeah, well, better luck this evening, obviously. Well, I hope so. You're nominated yeah. in that many categories. Was that a surprise? That or? many? Uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> we, we never You're not expect. allowed to say. You yeah, know. yeah. But um, yeah. I'm obviously very happy to be nominated in so many categories. Uh, Ooh, such Alan Wake 2 director. Not like weirder says in chat. Very uh, good poll. So, you know, mm. a lot of I didn't know he was British. Competition, but, you know, we're excited, so. What's been the most rewarding part? I mean, apart from Sam Lake lurking in the wings. What's been the most rewarding part, having launched the game? I think I would, I would like to host something like this, Janet, but I don't, I don't think they want me. They don't want. Um, 37-year-old like guys standing around, I feel like. It, I, I'm not going to enjoy getting dressed up, you know. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I probably read it. Well, yeah, the industry is uh, well, based on 37-year-old like, guys standing around. From? What are you talking about? Like, you know what? Like, that's a great point. Well, main, I'm going to make that case. kind of way in for me was, so it takes place in 9th century Baghdad, but it's also, there's science fiction components to it. 9th century Baghdad, but with sci-fi. From 2023, Janet, what do you got? very old and very futuristic. This is really tough. That is a very... Playful playground, mm. and then I um, worked with a number oh, of Assassin's Creed musicians Mirage. Uh, from oh. Egypt and right. Israel and Palestine and Tunisia. Um, There's three thousand uh, people Iraq. waiting, so beating down the door. Show us the awards. Appropriate at that time, mm-hmm. and then I fused that with a bunch of electronic stuff. Okay. Very well. <laughs> hey, Jen Romero. Okay. Right, now, I do want to say, this I've is been meaning to read his sir. book. What a Thank wonderful you. Blazer. Thank you for the awesome. subs yeah. to our hello. Do you Greatly have to be careful it. when sitting down on that because it looks like you might have yeah, to. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. You have to be very careful. You don't hit people, yeah. you know, don't hug too hard, you know. I like the spikes, yeah. <laughs> uh, John, you're an industry legend. Uh, can we talk <laughs> he must be so sick of hearing that. And what, you know, an institution like I don't know, would you get sick? I would not get sick of hearing that. I think legendary implies old. Finally welcome games into the... I don't know. You could be old and not legendary, though. Table. Well, that's a worst case scenario. Uh, it was You're right. For games to be recognized in, in, like everyone know, ages, but not everyone that's becomes a, legendary. That's a, you know, a legitimate well, art form for a really way. long time. I mean, if and people talk about you after your past, you become way, a legend. Then, we love just like Destiny once told us, we can become yeah. legend. And just award ceremonies all over because. Uh, let know, me tell you the coolest thing about John Romero. Creative people making these things that everybody's. You know what a doom nut I am, Janet. No, but yeah, that's all I ever talk about. At GDC, how we get anything done? At GDC. A couple years ago, it's just he gave a talk, and then after the talk, a lot of people do this, but he went above and beyond. Where he then just went out into like um, kind of the cafeteria area where there's like a bunch of tables and stuff, and everybody who wanted to from the talk can just come over and talk to him. And I was like working at one of those tables, and then he sat down at the table next to me, and it was just then filled with like really young game developers who just sat there and asked John Romero questions, like super specific questions about their so game really they were showing them their indie game like and, and uh, everyone just had a different thing seen, like, and he was there GPT for like over an hour released, it was the most pleasant it, the world conversation it was like this is like, this is what it looks like mentoring the next generation of the game industry it was awesome and to see definitely hit games as well so yeah, it's nice that these events have like Which, that kind of collaborative I, I element the, uh, to it of like yeah. people you know meeting and um you know i actually saw like a I think it was a tweet from Mike Bissell today that said 
my favorite days are there, there are days where I get to meet someone I respect or admire greatly and they introduce me to someone else that I admire greatly and those are like some of my best days at work yeah. is what it said and I feel like that is kind of the energy of a lot of these like, events and specifically like the awards like it's besides like the event itself it's about like the lead up it's like everything involved with it which I think a lot of people might not always think about if you just kind of you know check out the highlights or like the winners and all that obviously that's the main part of it but it's like the build up is also part of the event yeah i'm gonna jump ahead uh -oh. working with a charity what we've achieved has been in in partnership with how do they pull who they're talking to you think we've worked with that we've you know we've helped that we've learned oh do they have it mapped out or is it just like hey romero come over here make their games more accessible so it as i say it's just a lovely endorsement for accessibility altogether i think they've just probably just pulled them but isn't this just one straight shot so then it would have to be mapped out i imagine hello everyone in the office hello 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 Oh, they're not talking to us, yeah. Right, we must have a party of our own. Sounds like Molyneux, but it ain't Molyneux. But maybe from the same area of England as Peter Molyneux. Yeah. We share what we learn with everybody around the planet. I'm still confused what the English is. We have been so spoiled. For games, yes. like in every single category, it's like non-stop bangers. There are so it's many Jules. games I've played, so many games I've been surprised by. Oh yeah, so yeah, those you know, No, normally there's there's like yeah, they're really cool. Filler, what, they're filler, like they do a bunch of like hosting work as and like stuff. Some of the so. other ones. Yeah. And this year it's just every. I don't know how the juries have done it. This year it's been super cool. Difficult. Clothes. I mean, what have you been playing? Yeah, the they have like incredible your style. Your favorites. Oh god, I like a little bit of everything. So I got really into any of this so it's it's really hey it's really hey Lee's best friend oh don't look at my desktop suitcase because that's gonna be a heavy a heavy trip home <laughs> there might be seven spoilers in there so. oh oh well not having one oh, left okay. i'm not actually sure <laughs> <laughs> so. now how many awards do you think final fantasy 7 rebirth will be up for Janet? i hope they send them let's put it that way um yeah. I mean, How many are, are, awards are there? What about all the other games that are up? 300. Really I'm going to say five. Um, well, because you said Bar's Gate had the most with ten. Yeah. Things like Alan Wake, okay, I'm going to say five. And... How does it feel to be in such a lustrous uh, So it looks like they are live on Twitch, so you would think it'll be live any second on YouTube. We prefer watching the YouTube version. Maybe more. I don't know. Because is, is, is Re I mean, Rebirth, I think, is probably... It is probably the biggest game of the year. Oh, I'm just... Meant, it's not going to be up for... I don't think it hit the window for this whole thing. Oh, no, not for this. But no, I just mean, like, next... I figured you were asking, like, in the future. Oh, in the future, it'll win every single award, I think. Um, it's going to sweep... It's gonna do. I think it'll probably be the most accoladed um, game of the year. I think. Rebirth, really? So. Yeah, because it's know. like the biggest game that's out. Um, I think there'll also be definitely. I mean, there. I expect more infinite wealth, uh, love than just typically for like the Yakuza games, but I don't really know. Uh, and there's definitely a, a moment with Dragon's Dogma two happening, but I don't know if that moment is a transcendent moment. Yep, I'm curious to see as well. Uh, okay, Yay. on with the show. This is it. Oh, perfect timing. Look at this. Welcome to the first annual BAFTA Games Awards 2004. The BAFTA goes to Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Cool. The truly fantastic game, Metroid Prime. Oh, trip down memory lane. Legend of Zelda. Ah, oh, man. What a good game. They know what we want. Auto, and it is Project Gotham Racing 2. Best game I hope they have the same announcer throughout the entire thing. Call of Duty. You did it, Call of Duty! Oh my god. Oh, that's smart. Smart! We're showing the evolution of the franchises. For our industry. This is, we're actually giving recognition. Janet, if anybody holds the BAFTA mask award up to their face and I looks through it, I'll chug game all of this. No problem. one's gonna hold that's a do promise. that. That's a promise. I feel like, in my mind, it's like, well, I don't, I don't think it's really a spoiler, game but it's like, why am I thinking of, like, God of War or Ragnarok? For that, like, just look through it oh, and have, the, like, the... Oh, the weird mask? The mask mask? Yeah. For 20 years of supporting the gaming industry. The it does look fun. Uh, volume Germany. okay for everybody? Super we can raise it, lower it. Through and see the truth, you know? The last of us. Hellblade. Monument Valley. What we made to be defeat. Yeah! Oh, God, what a good game. Great game. I love that game so much. I'm ready for their next game. You know, it's been seven years. 
Yeah, you gotta imagine the pressure is like pretty high too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Sit at my table. Thank you. Look at that. How cool is that? Oh, Almost survived. So effing cool. Bruce Straley oh, and Neil Druckmann oh, together. Oh, the rare occurrence. Yeah, I said I, I, I played Joel. <laughs> You're not Joel. Joel's hair is better. <laughs> Hideo Kojima from last Do year. Do think that this is I didn't expect there's gonna be a bunch of jokes. Yeah. I love that it's an orange box too. Yeah, that's cute. Heck yeah. The best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best. Every winner? 20 years? Please welcome your host, Phil Wang. I gotta try not to get secondhand stress from watching someone host a big event. <laughs> it's nice that he seems to be leading with confidence. It's not even the stress about what, if they'll do well necessarily. It's like, I can't help but, it's like the empathy of the experience, you know? I'm like, ah. That's so much work. The trick, Janet, just kill that part of yourself that has empathy. Oh, wow, look at this. Just snuff mm. it out. Hello, BAFTA Games Awards 2024. <laughs> see, this is what games media mentorship looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. Uh, I'm your host, Phil Wang. Uh, I'm a comedian, writer, and hopeful future bad guy in a problematic Far Cry game. <laughs> That's what we got. Now, a rolling this is light the laughter. 20th BAFTA Games Awards. 20 years, can you believe it? Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's how long we still have to wait for GTA 6. 20. Oh. It's been an incredible <laughs> year for games. Uh, the BAFTA Games Awards exist to recognize and celebrate the creative and technical achievements of the games we love. And tonight, we're gathered here you for a second, to celebrate right? the fantastic work of games developers and creatives is it like coming in, doubles, in the room just and around the world. Be. We cannot celebrate these achievements without acknowledging that it has been a difficult year for many in the industry, with widespread layoffs impacting the livelihoods of friends, colleagues, and game studios. Bolo so tie? it is more important that than ever that we I recognize so, yeah. I was thinking your about that incredible too. achievements. We are proud to support and celebrate like you all on your journeys as you continue to produce work that still blows our minds. It was an astonishing year for gaming, and that's reflected in the quality of our nominees tonight. We have such a great evening ahead. Are you ready? Yeah. Nice. I mean, first of all, what an impressive venue. Huh? I mean, this room's so big, some of you haven't even rendered for me yet. <laughs> it's actually a bit bright in here. Sorry, can, can we just adjust the slider so the people on the right are barely visible? Great joke. Great joke. What's barely visible? What's even. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Perfect, 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 perfect. Uh, <laughs> applause for the darkness slider. I love it. Uh, now, just a bit of uh, housekeeping. Uh, please turn your phones on silent. Uh, it will make you more undetectable in stealth mode. Uh, but not you guys watching at home. You stay on your phones. Get two phones. Dual wield your phones and get involved using the hashtag BAFTA Games. One of my awards. biggest fears is my phone. That's for everyone in the oh, yeah. room. Yep. Toilets. I've Which actually did happen to me at the um, GDC Awards. Well, then you should have an alarm. Really absolutely terrifying. I had an alarm set for like, my cat custom... to or something. <laughs> oh. Look, they can't all be winners. In the event of an emergency, the fire exit is through that door, but you will need to defeat all enemies before it opens. Now, before <laughs> we get started, we would jokes. like to thank our official games partners, Epic Games, PlayStation, and Xbox and to EE, our Audience Award sponsor. I am so honored, genuinely so honored to be a host this evening. I've always loved games. Uh, my first console was a Sega Saturn. Anyone remember those? Woo! I mean, what, what, what an console? amazing console. I mean, you could play House of the Dead. One. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I had a light gun. <laughs> I had a light gun to go with it. Man, I miss my light gun these days. Why in my head then it was like a Vectrex or something? Like, I yeah, no, no, that's fair. Why I think you're so much older than you are. Well, I'm, Give me those yeah. turnips now. Maybe I'm not that old, but also just, now, we were really cheap. Now, this year's nominees have given us so such weird. a that was wide like, range of experiences. I didn't grow up with that Jedi. NES stuff. I saved Hyrule, and I finally fulfilled my dream of getting intimate with a bear. <laughs> Ooh, now the crowd's alive. I still don't know how I found that Call of Duty mod. 
Now, there's a lot of industry here tonight, a lot of, uh, a lot of important people. Um, and as well as stand-up, I'm actually a bit of uh, an actor, too. Um, and as the games directors are in the room tonight, if it's okay, I'd just like to quickly audition for any uh, upcoming roles you might need in your filling in your series, if that's okay. Um, okay. Uh, this is my audition for a guard in a stealth game after I've shot him in the back. Huh? <laughs> what was that? I guess it was nothing. Here's my audition for Link. Here. <laughs> and here is my audition for Mario. Oh, well, that's your problem right there. Seal and the U-Bend's cracked. Uh, with material and labor, you'd be looking at 130, 150 pounds. Oh, sorry, that's a scene from his day job. Now, it hasn't just been... <laughs> I like it. Didn't work, but I like just it. Been a, it hasn't just been a great year for the big titles. You know, we've also played some incredible indie games this year. I love Chance of Sinar. Chance of Sinar. Yeah, Nominated let's go. Tonight. There they are. The Sinaris themselves. A Make the language chance Sinar learning people game rich. that recreates that sense of, <laughs> I don't know what the hell anyone is talking about. The game equivalent of being on TikTok over the age of 30. <laughs> Cocoon. Cocoon is a puzzle game. Yes, yes. Cocoon is a puzzle game in which you have no idea what to do, you're just frantically pressing one button. Just like my local bank cashier whenever I walk in there naked. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have an incredible array of games. I would like to write these jokes. I think that'd be really When's the last time you walked into a bank? It's an naked? Just to be nominated. Just in general. So I go to the bank once a month simply being here. It's to okay. deposit well checks. I love it. You don't trust the, um, the phone one? It's a confusing thing. You... Uh, unless you're a plus one, in which case, just don't steal too much stuff. I think there's like a stuff, limit please. to that. Leading the nominations mm. tonight is... For like wow, I, I, I wouldn't know if I have enough problem then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Spider-Man 2 with 10. And Baldur's Gate 3 with an incredible 11 nominations. 11! Good lord. Unfortunately, there have been some snubs as well. I mean, nothing at all for Skull Island Rise of Kong. Uh, How dare he? Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is nominated tonight for best game. Best game, Baldur's Gate 3. I've, uh, there they are. I've been having loads of fun with Baldur's Gate 3. There are just so many Baldur. difficult decisions to make that impact the rest of your game, you know? And for example, it's taken me 30 hours but I've finally chosen Penis B. <laughs> I, it just looks like it shares my values. I don't know. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, here is a list of uh, things my non-gamer girlfriend has called Baldur's Gate 3 to me. Uh, Balthazar I'm Gang really 3. <laughs> Bowling Guys 3. Balding Goose 3. Balsamic Glaze 3. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 2, nearly. <laughs> and this is the weirdest one. Phil, you're spending too much time on that thing. I think we should see other people. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2, also nominated for Best Game. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing game. Insomniac's recreation of New York City is so realistic, I actually caught tetanus. It's amazing. <laughs> Now, I know a lot. Okay, they're coming after America now, Dan. We can't stand for this. Tight body suit and mask. <laughs> Except when Spider Man does it, York, he's actually. helping the police. And, and I'm like, when man, I do it, I'm arrested such a fun place by to be. the police. What's with the double standards? We're both just mysteriously sticky men trying our best. Oh, oh. Peggy 18, remember, guys, Peggy 18. <laughs> Zelda, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is nah, nominated. Ah, there's a game. Will Nintendo be there? This show Alan Wake's developers, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Zelda Real is Real, a you know? beautiful game, but I think the life lessons in it are a bit misleading. Like, you can cook chicken for five seconds and it's safe to eat. <laughs> or that it's a good idea to sneak up on a wild horse from behind. <laughs> or that you can build things by just gluing random bits of crap together. I mean, in Zelda, you can build a working aeroplane in that way. Whereas in real life, what you actually get is a Boeing. Boeing. Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 is nominated tonight. That's right. Mm. Top Alan Wake 2. 
Now, as well as, as well as Best Game, Alan Wake 2 is also nominated for Animation, Artistic, and Technical Achievement Awards. Deservedly. I mean, the graphics are incredible. I swear, half of the cutscenes look like real people. I, it's just <laughs> extraordinary. Now, I personally relate a lot to Alan Wake myself. Uh, people in rural towns don't like it when I turn up, either. <laughs> now, guys, are you ready for a great evening of awards? Are you ready? I'm so glad to be here. Congratulations to everyone. It's so good to see you. So please, sit back, relax, and let us celebrate the hard work and endless creativity of an industry that makes magic every day. And what an amazing person we have to kick us off. He's the star of Sex Education and an avid esports player, Asa Butterfield. And he was almost Spider Man. Am I thinking of the right really? person, Pet? I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes you say Thank something, you, and I'm like, I never really know if it's a bit or not. Not a bit. Like, no wanna... bit. No, he was like super, actor, super duper rumored. He's a little Hugo from Scorsese's Hugo. And there's nothing more. Remember Baby Hugo? Incredibly talented I people don't. Our you didn't see Hugo in 3D in the theaters? And all of these no, exceptionally actually. creative mm. teams. Have Can you imagine him being Spider-Man? The nominees for debut game are. I think so. Okay. It's because you see Spider-Man so infrequently. Like, you see Spider-Man's face so infrequently that okay. game. So you're saying you can see it if he was wearing a mask? Yeah, you can slap anybody on there. You know? <laughs> I love that little cat. Viewfinder. That little weird cheddar slider cat. <laughs> ah, that game's still so cool. Dave the Diver. Ah, oh, those sharks. Oh, those sharks. Cocoon. Oh, that's right. This Asa, little guy. Cute little bugman. Asa, yeah. uh, he played Dota 2 on Giant Bomb with Brad. That's right. Because remember Brad freaking out like, I played Dota 2 with the new Spider-Man, and then it turns out he didn't end up being a new Spider-Man. God, the soundtrack. That was so good. We are the chorus, the gods who remain oh, stray gods, stray gods. The role playing musical. Show them some love. This isn't justice. I can Very glad myself. I played through this, Janet. I'm glad I got it in here. Oh, stray gods? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you played through that. Oh, yeah. Dredge. Dredge. I still have to finish this. Same here. Oh, that's good. It's uh, like it got to, it's getting adapted into a live action movie. I saw some headline about that. Oh. Um. Oh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Chad, Chad backed you up on that. Yeah, I there guess so. And the BAFTA goes to Venba. Yeah, Venba! Okay. Bring food up. Bring food up. Ugh. That seems stressful to make that walk, go down some rickety stairs. I'm always worried about falling. Oh yeah, totally. What's the thing? It was like the heels and all that. Oh, heels. what a nightmare! Like graduation was stressful Hello? for that reason too. It's like don't fall. Uh, thank you. This is pretty wild. Uh, I also have some words from our designer Abi, who could not be here today. So I'm just gonna read that from this piece of paper that I wrote down this afternoon. <laughs> We're very pleased to win the award for debut game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, BAFTAs, for giving us this platform. I would like to use it to call for a complete ceasefire and end the horrific genocide that's still happening. Wow. Getting out of the gate swinging, BAFTAs. Also interesting to write that note and be like, you, you deliver it. Like, oh, I'm going to hand this one to you. I mean, I think the team's all in a group. I would imagine. I would imagine. Making games is a group effort, and I want to thank my team, my brother, my parents, Pop Agenda, Laundry Bear, Victoria, Eka, and Ontario Creates. Uh, I was really happy to be able to show off the culture and cuisine that's very important to me. I would love nothing more than to see more such culturally rooted and local stories, and I think that Benba resonating with so many of you is a sign that there is a very strong space for games like that to exist. Thank you. Perfect. I mean, talk about oh, yeah. cool, calm, and collected. I mean... Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. The right level is kind of like, I don't know. This is weird. Show me where to oh, go. Oh, the suit, too. The suit. It's good. Hits. Sound. Sound has always been an integral part of gaming. Apart from the golden era of silent gaming in the 1920s, of course. <laughs> who could forget Solid Charlie joke. Chaplin's Pro Skater 2? <laughs> but today, sound is a vital element of every game. This I'm next like, award the, celebrates the, the, very the motion picture of audio sound achievement. Lore, you know? So listen up. Mm -hmm. To present the award for audio achievement, please welcome comedian and journalist Ellie Gibson. You can't be a comedian and a journalist. Then what's that thing you guys do at Thanksgiving? Yeah. <laughs> That's hardcore journalism, Janet. That's the Look future. Look at that sparkly. What a suit. The suits are like, where are y'all getting these suits from? Tell me. Tell Friends, me. Friends, gamers, lend me your ears as we delve deep into the award for audio achievement. And what a year it's been for Great lovers nails, of audio. Jeez. From the swishing of webs I and Spider-Man like to the high uh, riffs of Hi-Fi Rush, <laughs> our headphones have been treated to some truly glorious sound waves. The nominees for audio achievement are... I love audio awards. They're like yeah. my favorite awards. Really? Audio yeah. achievement. I feel like I mean, we don't yeah. talk about sound design enough in games. Yeah. But it's also because we're not really equipped to, usually. So, like, yeah. you have to really train your ear for that. Yeah. And I definitely don't have the full ear for that, but I'm, I'm working on developing that. Yeah. It's just, it's so tough to gauge, like, yeah, Call of Duty versus Venba, which has better audio. It's like, ah, what does that even mean? It's a tricky one. Star Wars yeah, I, I think for me it's about the way, the ways in which it, like, captures specific moments or mechanisms. Sure. But I do think there's that, that conversation of, like, it, when it's more in service to the story, it does stick out more into your block, I think. Which is also what's cool about these. They're, like, peer nominated. They're a little bit more... Hi-Fi Rush. I don't know, like, specific, or not specific, but like more, less obvious than what yeah. I think we might nominate for. Yeah. That's how. See, after the GDC panel, now you got to rework what you think of best sound when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom. I do. I will say, yeah, honestly, yeah. it really did make me appreciate the sound more in terms of the ways that they, their, their sound system was so dynamic to account for so many different moments. Yeah. Where is it? Alan Wake 2. I don't remember what my favorite sound design of last year was. I forgot what I... I mean, it's so tough to be that. like, Hi-Fi Rush is all about audio, so it's tough to gauge that. I'm, I'm a sucker for the Foley, though, so I, I didn't okay. go with that one, but I went with them. I, Death Space was way up there for me, personally. Oh, yeah. And the BAFTA goes to... But horror is always... Alan like, Wake 2. There we go. I will say, Alan Wake 2 had one of the best sound design moments in gaming last year when you walked that train car. Mm, oh, and you hear like the screaming. Oh mm. God, I hated that. That was maybe yeah. the scariest part of the whole game for me. Oh, that freaked me out. Keep the claps going. You gotta do them that service. Just keep the claps going. I get my piece of paper ready. Everyone's you're hitting the this paper, which I, I do think it looks after. nicer than the this phone, right? Moment. Oh, yeah. So first I'd like to uh, thank my amazing audio team. That would be Tazio, Gulli, Thomas, Josh, Annika, Kit, Henry, Villa, Pauli, Tanali, Arthur, Iro, Samuel, and Adam. And I'd also like to thank our partners, in particular, Dynamedian and Redpipe. Thank you so much. There we go. Short and sweet. Go back there. What's going on back there? Now, modern gaming thrives on multiplayer. Gone are the days when I would have to invite all my friends around for a Minesweeper LAN party. Well, I say all my friends. It was my maths teacher, Mr. Pritchard. But boy, could that man click a small square. These next titles epitomize... <laughs> These next titles epitomize the shared thrill of games. To present the award for multiplayer, please welcome a brilliant actor and voiceover artist who in the last few years has done the unthinkable, made a character called Clive cool. Uh-oh. It's Final uh -oh. Fantasy's Ben Starr! Crowd's losing it. He's enjoying his life a little. I was going to say too much, but maybe not enough. Can it? I feel like, <laughs> I mean, he, I think Ben Starr is just really good at 
being on camera. Thank you. Yes. If there is one universally acknowledged truth in the games industry, it's that any single-player narrative masterpiece can be exponentially improved with a last-minute tacked-on multiplayer element. <laughs> Mass Effect 3, I'm looking at you, my sweet, beautiful, idiotic summer child. <laughs> and while I may or may not be joking, I'm almost certainly limiting my future employment prospects in the AAA gaming space. So, with my career in tatters, I'd like to reveal my own surprise mechanics and guide your collective gaze to this year's nominees. Who managed to make multiplayer experiences and somehow not balls them up? In fact, they managed to not balls them up so much that they're all rather fantastic, and they managed to not balls them up so much that they've all been nominated for an actual award. Like a good one. Loki multiplayer is getting dragged as like a concept like a at this, at this moment. So there. Oh, he was so close to doing it, Jay. Here are the nominees. He's so close to putting it on his face. Putting it on, yeah. And it would be like the mask. I think it would like suck to your face if it happened. Multiplayer. Forza Motorsports. Oh, yeah. That came out last year. Baldur's Gate 3. I still need to check out the multiplayer in this. I'm going to start a new campaign. Very interesting. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Sorry, you pronounced it incorrectly. Chat, uh, chat says that they bet $100, but I haven't seen the math. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a... Ooh. I'm not taking that bet, but I think they're right. Call of Duty. Have you well, seen... Modded in our chat. I'm going to make a prediction. Uh, <laughs> <in there. laughs> Diablo 4. Diablo Mario. You ever tempted to go back to Diablo? Um, it's it's definitely on that list. I really enjoyed it, but oh. I can't be tempted Party because I, I have too much already that just yep. it on the docket, you know? Yep. It's while it's on Game Pass now. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, I think it had, like, um, extra stuff that came with that, too. Yeah. And the BAFTA goes to... Does it, though? Does it? <laughs> Super Mario Brothers won. Wow. All right. Unexpected. I'm curious who's accepting this. Who are you, man? Reveal yourself. I think that's Mario. Hello. Um, I'm Nelson Calvino, marketing director for Nintendo UK. Wow. Very happy to be uh, receiving this award on behalf of the development team that unfortunately can't be here, but is very proud um, about receiving this award. I have a Marketing message from director. the development team that are going to read to you. How did she know to smile just then? Um, the development team's wish was for everyone to play Super Mario Brothers Wonder their way. Yeah, the pen is cute. Whether you play solo, local yeah. co-op, or online, how you play is entirely up to you. In local <laughs> co-op, you can work together with your family or friends <laughs> They're just describing features. and enjoy a friendly competition. The casual connection of the online multiplayer is designed to create a fun online gameplay experience. It just feels a little bit like that, doesn't it? Yeah. I wish it was like each other, a real message from the developers and that's kind of the marketing department or whatever. And then three barriers. We are very honored to receive the multiplayer awards. Thank you very much, BAFTA, and to all the jury. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> just that he's 10 toes down in marketing. I mean, that's the job, right? Like, yeah. Also, like, I would be so idiotic if I was in that position where I, like, could come up and receive Bath an award on behalf. I would be Ooh. like posted up with that it. Supports like, the next so generation scary. of creative talent working in Britain's film, games, and television industry. Throughout tonight's ceremony, we'll be hearing from some of these BAFTA breakthrough cohorts and <gasps> some previous BAFTA That's winners word. who will be sharing their journeys with us and giving a sneak peek at the forthcoming games. And to kick things off with our first BAFTA alumni story, let's take a look at the charming world of the Tales of Kinzera Zao. 
Oh, interesting. Hey. So we can look, look ahead a little bit here. Hello, my name is Abu Bakr Salim. I am the, the answer CEO is I have not seen the map. Studios. And how uh, how the, was that prediction? And what was the the skew? I think it was either slightly, I'm mostly no. It was very close. I think it was like 60-40. Okay. I forgot what direction. Nominee I think for my work in Assassin's Creed. It was Origins mostly yes, actually. Spire. Since the nomination, I can't imagine. 325,000 points bet in, in versus. More video games. Two hundred thirty-seven thousand. Uh, I can't imagine really a life so hollow as yours, Janet, having not seen the. Oh my God, Crowboy! I'm out two hundred and fifty k channel points. Ah. I remember coming to BAFTA. With but the thrill of betting was what it was all about, right? <laughs> Isaiah, I know what we're doing this weekend. Oh man. Well, yeah. And then followed up with Son of the Mask with Jamie Kennedy. Clear the schedule, yeah, yeah. You, know? you got to do it. You know, me and Touch with have been really, really lovely and helpful, and I think like that has truly, truly helped and aided to get me to where I am now. Tells of Kanzara Zao really was inspired by Is this the journey of grief. Summer release? After I, I remember. My father. And I think I've been um, trying to really find an honest and truthful way of depicting that. And my dad introduced me to games when I was a kid, so it only made sense to make a game, a piece of art that honors him. It's exciting, it's terrifying, it's it is. beautiful, it's on, also uh, incredibly uh, I don't know, oh, April 23rd. Really do wow. People wow. Enjoy the Yeesh. game. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's April 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my notion. <laughs> we all have to evolve and adapt with the times. For example, when I was younger, I wanted people to call me Philip. Then I became Phil. Then Wang. Then Phil Wang. And now finally, the Wanginator 3000. This next award celebrates those teams that have consistently improved and expanded their titles. You're going to love them, or my name isn't the Wanginator 3000. To present the award for Evolving Game, please welcome Evolving Twitch Ambassador games. Cyborg that Angel mean? and Best Living Games. Is that what that means? Two million follower mark, Sweet Anita, who has. I think it's kind board. of in that. I think it's. I think it's probably focused on ongoing, but I think it has that space for um, stuff like Cyberpunk, which is not really an ongoing game, but has like yeah. substantial updates. Okay. Clonk, clonk. It takes a huge effort to make a successful game, but to reinvent a game year after year so that it still feels fresh and exciting as the day that it came out is truly a remarkable achievement. And the titles listed in this category are all fantastic examples of that. The nominees for Evolving Game are... What are those pop sounds? Someone's playing a pop cap game in the background. Evolving Game. Cyberpunk okay. 2077. I felt a real twinge the other day, Janet, of like, should I go back and play Phantom Liberty? I feel bad that I didn't play it. Final Fantasy It's the second, your second chances, right? I guess. Oh, it is. Well, you know what? That would have been good if I remembered it in time for this week's episode of the podcast. You missed your chance for the second chance. <laughs> no what are we going to do? Have an episode about third chances? Or this? Okay. this song has got some traffic, baby. Forza Horizon 5. This game's so good, Janet. Although, when did it come out? I guess this is just some time ago. Yeah. But they still are adding, like, Fortnite. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, Fortnite's always up there. It's just, it's at the core of the game. It is the game, yeah. And they're not even showing the Lego stuff. Genshin I mean, that's the biggest thing last year. Here comes the finale. I think Cyberpunk has really a real chance for this, but we'll see. I feel like there's a lot of, I don't know. I'm not sure how they're conceptualizing it, you know? Yeah. Like, you base it on the gap you close or down. the quality Very of what you put out, you know? It's tough, so right? tough, Shut up. It is a dickhead. It's dick. It's evolving. It's, it's Cyberpunk 2077. So chat's informing me that she has Tourette's, and that's what the pop was earlier as well. I had no idea. Okay, that makes sense. I think that crowd behaved very respectfully. 
If this were an American crowd, they could not handle that. No, don't be the self-hating American. Yeah, well. No one, no one likes the fake self-hating person. <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh. I'm so happy to be here and actually this is such a special award for us because it was, it was quite a bumpy road for us, <laughs> to be frank. <laughs> but I want to just thank to all my team and I don't want to say that it is only development team that we are on behalf of here today, but also all other teams that are supporting us, be going from support, IT, finance, PR, marketing, just everyone did a great job, and thank you so much for that. But additionally, I want to add one thing more. That without community, it wasn't possible. So for community, thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you. Right on. You did it, City Project. You did it. Did they say if they're doing anything after this with uh, Cyberpunk? I don't remember. They said they're making Cyberpunk too. So yeah. is this... Do you think the end of 77 is like any good game? Yeah, so, is it's, okay. yeah the Boston team is a making well Cyberpunk 2 at this point. Keeps, keeps you hooked from the moment you pick up the controller to the moment you realize three days have gone by and you really need to brush your teeth. To present the award for game design, please welcome Outside Xbox and Oxventure's very own Jane Douglas. She's bringing her own award. We know her from the pre show. Yeah. It looks like the mask Designing is part of her dress. Designing a successful game is an art form. It takes talent, ingenuity, and the ability to surprise and delight the audience at home. A well-designed game can rip you from your sofa and transport you to another world, and the titles in this category exemplify that. The nominees for game design are... Game Design. She's work at GameSpot, really. Dave huh. the Diver. I can feel that in my bones. That action. It's baked into my fingers at this point. I mean, what are we doing Legend here? Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Give them five such, such and send time. them on their way. <laughs> the little arm in that trailer is so funny. The train will take us to a place where science and art meet nature. The cat's Viewfinder. Ah, he's interesting experiments, and I like that they're relying on creativity. <laughs> I mean, how are you not sold on the game after seeing five seconds Trish. of gameplay? Ah. See, here's the thing about watching these, though. I feel like I just come face to face with all the games I haven't finished. I'm like, it's yeah, I, I remember you. <laughs> right. Cocoon. Uh, yeah. We are, um, it's nice to get reacquainted with 2023 games. We have a video coming up for, yeah, next week that's going to involve Marvel maybe a couple Spider games from 2023, Janet. That should be fun. Should be fun if it happens. It's it's scheduled for Tuesday, so we'll see how it goes. Wait. Game design. The whole kit and caboodle. And the BAFTA goes to Dave the Diver. Whoa! Dave slaying Zelda. Wow. There's Dave. Yeah, that is, I guess, uh, kind of interesting conceptually. Yeah. But I feel like the, I didn't play Dave the Diver, but the big pool, you know, you played it, right? Oh, yeah. See, you know, the everyone was always talking about how, like, layered and deep the mechanics went yeah. and how they kind of like presented them and being yeah. really like wowed by that that seemed like hello a super uh this is crazy beat zelda is wild uh, i really didn't expect this uh we were nominated in multiple awards but had no luck so i just came here to cheer for winners so <laughs> oh the yeah. show just started come on Stop. thank you so much for uh giving this award, it means a lot to us. We just beat Zelda. <laughs> you can't say that. You can't say that. <laughs> and, uh, as everyone knows, last year was one of That's the biggest hilarious. in gaming history. It's so I was just happy to stand next to these incredible games. <laughs> but luckily enough, I'm bringing this heavy mask back to Korea. And you know what to do with that mask. 
Yeah. I mean, like, Thank you. again, that's uh, just that's just real. Like, so when I first came and, up and with the so concept, that, everyone you know, was like, I don't know, diver, Pixar, deep. Ocean, and Sushi Bar. So what are you talking about? But we uh, trusted in the concept. Uh, we trusted in ourselves. So finally, we made it to BAFTA. Okay, so um, uh, thank you everyone for making us proud of what we have done. And a uh, special shout out to BAFTA for not having and not putting us on best indie game category. Thank you. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now, what do you think is meant by that? Is that meant by like we're not an indie game or like we don't want to only be in indie games? I think we don't want to only be in any games. We don't want to trigger that Princeton gotcha. debate. Britain has given the world so many sensational things. Football, Harry Styles, the correct pronunciation of aluminium, <laughs> Woo! the phrase you wore, and <laughs> our gaming industry is no different. This little part of the world we like to call home has created some of the most exciting and innovative games of all time. And this next award celebrates the very best from the last 12 months. This is interesting. To present the award for British, Just game, British Game. Please welcome some homegrown talent. It's the studio head of Rare, Craig Duncan. All right, cool. He's giving himself the award. Stab him. I really appreciate whoever comes out with the mask Good facing evening. out. I've like what a year been irking me when it's turned the way. <laughs> Every year, I don't want to see the label inside. Produces awe-inspiring titles. And this year is a stellar example of the variety and creativity this country has to offer. Congratulations to everyone who's been selected for this category. You truly are an inspiration. The nominees for British Games are... British Game. Easy Breezy. Cassette Beast. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that was British. That game was cool. But guess what other games are British? Ah, uh, where do I start? There's millions Forza? of those things out there. Just waiting to sink their teeth into us. Dead Island 2. This is, a, this is my favorite. Like, the geography of game development is my favorite sub-trivia category. Do you have a category like that in Trivia Tower? No. Uh, we tried. I think we do something with that, but... Like a, le a Geo-Catcher, Leo-Catcher? Yeah. Catcher. It's a little tough. I feel like Blessing has that. Oh, does he? Game Showdown, something like that. Oh, I, congrats on uh, competing in the Game Showdown thing. I watched, I watched a good oh chunk gosh. of that. Is it stressful? It, was, it seems so hard. It's so, it's so hard to do that. Yeah. And the questions were so her. brutal. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. also, fair or foul, the question I got, the personal question Blessing gave me was very different than the questions everyone else got. Oh, really? Warhead yeah. Oh, you didn't watch it? I watched the first the maybe half. Okay. Yeah, I uh, was complaining that like my question was like really specific. <laughs> what was it? And everyone and like t it was um, hey, you like Life is Strange, and uh, as a result, what's the game? I forgot if it was Don't Nod or not. What game did Don't Nod make that was and covering like an internet phenomenon? Oh yes, and I thought it was gonna be like Slender Man or something, and it was like Neopets, right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, well, now, now I will say in Blessing's defense, if you gave me a different question, I might have also gotten that wrong. Sometimes mm. I like I'm a trivia <laughs> expert, but I was like, why is mine so hard? That's tough. Um, yeah, but I was I was just happy to get points on the board. That stuff's always so so rough. Yeah. Uh, solid kilt, Chad sank. Uh, yeah, it does seem like this crowd loves indie games. Like people voting, it's definitely skew in that direction. Bell is here. Thank you! Thank you so much! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who made this game happen. The whole team, everyone who contributed and made this a dream come true for us. We are very, very proud of this. We are very, very honored. I just want to <laughs> draw other people into my speech, so we break that rule that we only have one person who can speak, so... Yes! Does anyone else want to speak? Yeah. Maybe not. Thank you. <laughs> Crowd goes wild. <laughs> she did it. 
Also, I want to thank Matt's <laughs> Whispers, parents. thank you. Because otherwise this would also not have happened. So thank you, Matt's parents. I hope they give snacks, because I'm very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm very nervous. <laughs> I guess thank you, Kalum, for bringing the, everybody together. I want to thank you. Thank you. We want to thank Sony for supporting us. Oh my God. Thank you so much. We're so honored to be here. Let's go now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. That's amazing. Let's go now. Hell yeah. <laughs> No one's ever said that before. Time for another BAFTA alumni story. My child Laban's Vaughn won Game Beyond Entertainment in 2019 for its immersive, story-driven game in which you help the child of an enemy in a post-war society. Let's hear from Aileen and Katerina about their experience and what we can expect from My Child New Beginnings. Hi, I'm Aileen Feste, producer and director of My Child Laban's Vaughn. And I'm Katerina Böhler, lead game designer. In 2019, we got to win this wonderful BAFTA for Game Beyond Entertainment. And Beyond it's a gift that keeps on giving. It has given attention to our game, but also to the I story bet of that's kind of like the, you know, children. Games for Impact. And attention yeah, to the topic so. of children born of war who are struggling and uh, suffering in that animation's the wild. world over. I love it that It has look. also opened a lot of doors for us, letting us meet interesting people, networking. We could just talk openly, right, about the things that they've been doing, the things that they've learned. And I think that's one of the things I love about the game industry, the sharing and the caring. We are working on a follow-up called My Child New Beginnings. <laughs> the player is now given more agency movement. to shape the future Jana, of the Jana, we should time. do this more often on the podcast. Just like a the traumatized little, child little gyration of the face. I need to be able to recognize the trauma. Yeah, I was actually, I was on my standing uh, board <laughs> we yeah, work for the last episode a child of the podcast. Smart, at the end. Smart. And hope that this game I know some people in the YouTube comments like health, don't like and best us moving. Trauma treatment. Oh, really? Uh, players. And that just is what and it is. For yeah. <laughs> players that are wondering, um, yeah, they find it distracting. Which I'm only distracted when Kyle's stupid camera game, like follows him or whatever. Because <laughs> he had it set to yeah. like follow him around the room like he's jumping around. And we hope to like he's a character from The guys, Mask. Uh, more about the game in the coming months. Right on. The artistic achievement present in modern gaming is mind-boggling. Whether it's a hey. sharply rendered blood splatter when your character dies, a realistic look of horror from an ally when your character dies, <laughs> or an incredibly beautiful Game Over title card when your character dies. Basically, I suck at gaming, everyone. To present the award for artistic achievement, please welcome an actor who's appeared in everything from Star Wars to Penny Dreadfuls to Black Panther. Say hello to Well, this is about this more like an Sapani. encompassing media organization. I think it makes sense that they would have, yeah. like, more of a spread. Yeah, so what's up? This industry is all about pushing boundaries. And with every new breakthrough in technology or skill, our games are getting more and more visually remarkable. And this award honors those genius creatives who are at the now, forefront when do of this, stretching Janet, are they the limits of what we all reading, think or they is possible in gaming. They're just reading. The nominees There's no acting here? for artistic achievement Correct. are... I think you're mistaken. Yeah, you have that weird thing about actors. Actors always be artistic acting, I like to say. Yeah, you're just like, everything's an act. That's Baldur's an act. Gate 3. <laughs> yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Cocoon.
isn't yeah, reading. Ben, are you acting right now? Ben's kind of acting. Right Everyone's now, acting actually. a little bit, yeah. Isn't reading. I think in Ben's mind he is. I yeah, think. that is true. Yeah, isn't reading cool. inherently acting? I sit on chat. No, it's performed. It's not acting. If you're performing, you're acting. No, because acting is you're eminent. You're replicating something. No. Like a specific no. person, Message. a character, an emotion. It's no, it's not. You're yeah. acting. You're acting different than you normally do. That's no. acting. I don't no. think so. I mean, you can be, you can be acting funny. funny, and that's like a thing. But as then you're acting. Doing the professional work of acting. Oh, well, you're turning the professional work now. I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah, so you're telling me, who am I, who am I, I'm, like, uh, is it emanating? Is that the word? Yeah. Not emanating. Emulating, maybe. Like, who am I emulating when I, like, read something? You're not, em yeah, you're not emulating anybody. You're just changing the way you normally talk. That's yeah, acting. Yeah, it's not acting. I think it's acting. You're acting no, more... That's like saying when you. I'm trying to think about if I'm reading, like if I'm reading a book to my kid, I'm doing. Yeah. A, there's a little acting on that. You might be if you're performing the voices. Nah, even if there's no voices, you still. And the BAFTA goes. No, to... you're just reading. You're just reading. Janet, so you're please. Me, uh, I'm trying to learn about in, in, Alan you told me in classrooms, you think that whole the whole classroom is acting when you read through the reading. When you read through what? When you do a read aloud, I'm like, oh. oh, we're all reading there's, this book There's acting. Out. There's acting in there. Yeah. No, you're well, no. Nah. If you're doing it well, I think you're putting a little spice on it. But you don't need to do that to read aloud. You don't, but it's boring if you don't. Here we go, Alan Wake Two. Sure. <laughs> wow. Look. Why don't you stay over Thank there with you. your little Thank Jurassic you, Park that. viral moment and just, uh, you know, figure your stuff out. <laughs> oh, Huge. bother. I, had, I, I tweeted about that today because award. I, oh, I had a similar comment about of a, of a, huge, a Taylor Swift lyric, and I'm like, is this my Jurassic Park? Like, oh, uh, yeah. I'd like to thank Sam Lake, Kyle Rowley for just incredible, wonderful creative partnership that we had in this project. <laughs> That says, don't worry, Janet, you're right. I know, but that's... I want more <laughs> than that. That's not enough for me. Also our not on the internet. What do you want? What do you want? For being sometimes stern, always compassionate in his stewardship of the project. Uh, I like the stern mention. But, um, of course, the, the biggest thanks, thanks of all to the to our team. Uh, I got the pleasure to, to work with. I need to make sure that I mention. I can't unfortunately mention all the names, but I'm trying to mention a few uh, key contributors and leads, leads that were part of the, part of the team. So um, thank you, John Crossland, Johannes Richter, uh, Ron Fröhlich, Juhani Jokinen, Riho Kroll, Antti Puomio, Damien Stempniewski, and Nazareno Urbano. Uh, it's a privilege to, to work with you. And uh, Additionally, I'd like to thank, like to thank Mr. Scratch, cinematics director uh, Antti Matta, and cinematographer Mikko Riikonen, who were a key part of building a, a game that actually also features a lot of live action and how to integrate it all together. Was a was a challenge, but it was was a pleasurable one because of these these two gentlemen. Uh, and finally, uh, building a visually complex game like this uh, requires a strong technical foundation. So. Huge thank you also to our Northlight tech team. Uh, these pixels, they wouldn't exist without you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Way to go, Northlight. Alan Wake mopping up. Someone says half the words are scratched out on that piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Creating a brand In new University IP from scratch is no easy task. As the inventor of Phil Wang's cat moisturizer, I know that better than anyone. And I have the claw marks to prove it. This next award celebrates those development teams who have taken an idea from its humble beginnings and molded it into a brilliant piece of work we can all enjoy. Uh, and a quick side note, if anyone wants to buy 3,000 bottles of cat moisturizer, uh, please contact me after the show. To present the award for new intellectual property, Please welcome an actress who voiced the now officially most iconic game character of all time. Yes, it's the original Lara Croft, Shelley Blanc. Wow, interesting. An interesting call out. I've never seen her before. She's <laughs> a Tomb Raider shirt. Thank you so much. 
It's Thank a really cute so shirt, though, to be honest. Good I like the little bling on it. 28 years ago, I lent my voice to the original Tomb Raider game Weird. and the iconic character, Lara Croft. Legendary, I'd say. I'm thrilled to be part of gaming history and honored that BAFTA have invited me here tonight. I know all too well how exciting it is to take something brand new and to watch it grow and become bigger than you could possibly imagine. And the nominees in this next award have all managed to create engaging, unique, and highly entertaining IP that has the potential to stay with us for decades to come. The nominees for new intellectual property are... No IP is bad. New intellectual property. Such a unique, weird category. Oh, interesting. All right. Yeah, I like new IP. It's kind of like in that same vein as debut game. You know? I get it's even more clear than debut game though. Yeah, well, because it's like debut per studio, not like yeah. debut per person. But then it's like, but then if you're fair. just change the name of your studio or form a new studio, yeah. it's kind of confusing. The system is so Now, how much does it matter in this category, like, sequelability, you know? Because all these games I think rules. it's just how good is the game. Okay. But I, I see why you asked that, because that would be an interesting wrinkle in it. Chance of Hello. Summer. So good. Ha! Whack-a-mole is in that game? I don't, yeah. Huh. I kind of wish I put this game one notch higher, I think, on my top ten list. Hi-Fi Rush. The world would be a brighter place. Yeah, I mean, I could do it now and no one would, no one would notice. <laughs> there's like eight people that read the article, but you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. ah. I hear ya. I'm rooting for Hi-Fi Rush. But it's like, we need the sanctity of the, the you know, dive. what else is, if we don't impose meaning, then yep. it's meaningless. You know yep. what I mean? I hear ya. I feel like with the energy of David Ever before, it really has a good and chance. And the BAFTA Could be. goes to... Could be. What does it say? What does it say? Oh my gosh. Doesn't say it. Oh. What? You find out! Oh, 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 oh. Classic oh, oh, oh. Laura Croft oh, whip. <laughs> <laughs> they have to go back up. No snacks. Snackless. Okay. I don't want her to blow it. I don't want her to talk again because she perfected it last time. She can't go up from there. <laughs> right this way, right this way. I think I have somebody else jump on the mic, you think? Speeches planned not to. <laughs> <laughs> we broke rules because there's only one person to talk. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> sorry. Um, you uh, thank talk. you again. It, it is such an honor, and also it's been such an honor to work with such an incredibly talented team of people on this game. Um, thank you so much. We want to make more viewfinder, but please give us money. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. There it is. <laughs> Whatever that game of telephone was, didn't get back up to the mic. Here we go. I think she made her own Tomb Raider shirt. I imagine someone designed it for her. Okay. I don't think she made it or something. I don't think she bedazzled that what makes okay. so magical It looks really good, though. I just wish that that was for Football manager. Candy crush. All titles that gripped me and kept me wondering, oh, what happens next? I'm currently halfway through the original Snake on the Nokia 3210. No spoilers, please. We are blessed by the sheer number of talented storytellers in this industry with the ability to enthrall and charm you from the moment you press new game. To present the award for narrative, please welcome... Game spots to more Hussein. What? Hey. He gets to go on a cool stage? This is not fair. People we work 
work with sometimes. Kind of, sort of, no him. Storytelling in gaming is unlike any other oh, yeah. medium. You have the no immersive right. nature of games means that the narrative doesn't just happen to you. Instead, you shape it, and you are part of it. With a truly brilliant title, like the games in this category, you feel the emotional beats, live the plot twists, and understand the character moments in a way that makes it impossible to put the controller down, and more importantly, leaves a lasting impact. The nominees for narrative are... So when Guts. do you feel... Oh. Narrative. When do you feel like you know someone um, enough to be like, oh, I just know Star them? Because you have Jedi like this survivor. like... Uh, Which everyone has that, right? But, I, like, here's, I'm, I'm curious what that Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. I don't like when people say, my friend from the industry, and it's like... I don't know. Like I, <laughs> I've had it a couple people times. Are a little loose. I people feel like are you loose. are a little loose. People are friend loose with their friends. I've heard on podcasts people be like, "Oh, my friend Ben Hansen." I was like, "They consider me a friend." Like, I, I, I think more than one meal where it's like one on one, or at least very small group. That, is that a good friend barrier? I think that requires like I think in the the modern world that's too high of a requirement. I think just yeah. if you're, I don't know, if you're friends, like you're friendly. Something friendly like is far, and I'm friendly with everybody. Zelda, I don't know, fr I think friend and friendly, there's a chasm there. Maybe you're giving out your friendliness too much, I don't know. I have people think you're like, oh, I'm friendly, but I'm not your friend. It's like, I don't know, maybe a friend leading people on. Oh, I'm flirtatious with my friendship status? Yeah. That's interesting. Um, to me, See, I just I lightly disagree with that slab. That if you're mutual, usually I, I try to respect the friend term also a little bit. It should be. Well, a I don't want to be overly familiar or overly excited. So, sure. With my mutuals, I'll say, "Oh, we're mutuals." Like mutuals. That sounds like yeah. a business partner. I don't know about that. Um, I think Final Fantasy 16. I think they're my friend if I like work with them regularly and I see them regularly, I talk to them regularly. Like, yeah, I would say that's a friend. I feel like they're my friend. Is Tamora your friend? <laughs> I would say Tamor and I aren't fr we're friendly, but we're not friends. Okay. I think. Wow. And the bad He's blood. cool. Dude. I like him, but we haven't hung three. out like no, at I'm, that level. I'm in that exact thing. So I, I think we probably. I think he might. He might. If he he might call me. In he should. Um. Wait, am I? Yeah. I mean, if I, if I listed all my friends, I wouldn't write Tamor's name. Down, right. Admittedly, right. Probably. Yep. You're not sending him no but Christmas card. I think he could. He's on the friend hit list. It's like people I want to be friends with, like, yeah. Oh, like, an assassinate? Like with being friends with them, yeah. I got it. Oh, wow. Um, it is heavy, like they said. There we go, Baldur's um, Gate, finally got a win, right? I would probably say I'm cool with Tamora. Yeah, that's probably what I would, I'm cool. probably would describe okay. it. And yeah. represent you don't hate Tamora. And narrative teams I like and the Tamora. entire team as a oh, whole. I do too. I, I like him more. So much goes into creating the kind Prove of stories it. we try to do. I just watching the clip, the visual. He's my friend on Facebook. Um, that's what it's, it's a, Facebook, Janet. Talent. That's that's the barrier. Yeah, I feel like. I'd like to I every day, every day, I message my friends. Of creative um, contributions of the Forgotten Realms. So yeah, sometimes I say like industry and, uh, to be friends. able to build on that was really amazing. It's like kind of like industry pals, and, like you know, um, colleagues. Yeah. Most Peers. of all, I think, thank you to Peers. the players yeah. who were not only open to experiencing the stories that we wanted to tell, but then took also, them let's not skip over like the narrative award because like how, how the yeah, yeah, world great, like, like such a <laughs> thank you very much. I feel like pinnacle narrative. Pinnacle narrative. There we go. Like I it would... just has such like an um, such an intensive narrative tapestry. Like it's so good. Every every morsel of it. As well, right? The BAFTA Special Award recognizes the impactful work an organization or individual has on the industry around them. And tonight is tr something truly special. To present tonight's special award is an industry legend. He's co founder of the role playing books Fighting Fantasy, co creator of EDOS Interactive, and the man behind Games Workshop. Oh, and did I mention he's also a knight of the realm? It's Sir Ian Livingstone! I thought they were going to say McKellen. I really thought they were going McKellen. I like just zooming in on uh, English developers. It's fun. God, you look all so young. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Games are fun. <laughs> Games are entertaining. Games are empowering. Games connect people. 
games are for everybody. The special award is presented to individuals whom the Academy believes have made a significant contribution to their sector. On behalf of the BAFTA Board of Trustees, we are delighted to present the Academy's special award to Special Effect. In recognition... Special Effects? Yeah. Thank you, sir. In recognition of the charity's inspirational work in transforming the lives of people with physical challenges. Through their innovative use of video games technology, the special effect team has brought enjoyment, inclusion, and a quality of life to people who might otherwise have been excluded from the joy of playing games. If you ever wanted a good news story about the games industry, bringing joy to people, or about technology, changing lives for the better, or about inclusion, or about empowerment, about the power of play, look no further than special effect. Let's hear from some remarkable people who have benefited from special effects, truly special work. Oh, it's like a, okay. With my disability, I'm limited to do things. I don't want to sound like a gameaholic, but it was one of the only things I could do for enjoyment. Special Effect is an amazing charity who help people with disabilities to access gaming again. Yes! <laughs> I think it was my wife that told me about a charity that could help me to like, continue to play a yeah, just got in touch and uh, it's been an amazing journey ever since. Go away, you bad guy. <laughs> Once Daddy got the equipment, that was her off, and her words were, I'm now a gamer, and she's been playing it and having the time of her life. I can't do a lot by myself, but I can play the games on my own, which gives me a good sense of independence. It has been important for me to have the ongoing support from everyone at Special Effects because of I've grown up. They've helped me by adapting how I game. No matter what MND throws at me, the guys at Special Effects have come up with solutions to allow me to still play games. Now we've been doing some really amazing work with IFA control. And it's just Interesting. So for me. So I'll be honest, I didn't think special effects would be able to help me, but they tried different angles, different positions, and they made this brilliant system that I use today. It's too good to be true. They can do this. It was like, oh, you've got a new toy at Christmas. Gaming is fun, and that's the most important thing to me, is having What's fun. What's he playing, Halo? If I hadn't had oh, the chance know. to game on being with special version. effects, I wouldn't be in my games and development and coding course at college because it opened my eyes to what I can actually do. Games are a way to escape whatever is happening in general life and allow you to explore new places in a fun way. It's changed my life, honestly. In the world of gaming, anything is possible. There you go. Don't let anyone ever say anything bad about games again. <laughs> games are a power for good. So BAFTA, please put your hands together for Special Effects founder and CEO of Special Effects, the amazing Dr. Mick Donegan. <laughs> and his son, Tom. <laughs> his son's going to come too. Hope that's cool.
Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My goodness me. Um, <laughs> whoa. Um, uh, uh, Tom, uh, my son and our COO, is here as a backup in case I tear up. <laughs> it's highly likely that he'll be here within a few seconds. So, um, no, right, uh, I'll fire away. Thanks so much. That's ridiculous. Thanks ever so much, all of you. Oh, was um, he the guy in the, right, on the red carpet uh, um, that we couldn't um, identify? Thank you, Ian, for that lovely, oh, lovely I don't introduction. Think he is. Thank you. Right, and his Firstly, son was holding the mic. I'd like to say a heartfelt thank mm. you to BAFTA for selecting Special Effect to receive this prestigious award. I'd also like to congratulate my tireless, dedicated team for going the extra mile day after day. In fact, uh, they've stayed on at the office last night to celebrate uh, uh, and are watching this uh, and having a BAFTA party of their own with bow ties and everything. So, if you please excuse like us, me, Jenna. hi team. Hi team. I mean, it's the way you got to watch it. Uh huh. Yes. We warned everybody. Well, so particularly if you're like with us, like yeah, streaming it, I'm like, team. yeah, like, yeah, have a little pageantry. Okay? Great advice. Yeah, great last advice. but certainly not least, I'd like to thank all of those remarkable people in the games industry, many of whom are here tonight, who've supported, collaborated, and shared a few drinks with us over the years. I'll never be able to thank you enough for welcoming Special Effect, both as colleagues and friends. Together. Mm, We're making a real difference to the quality of life of so <laughs> who's many who? disabled people all over it's the world blurry. <laughs> by opening the door <laughs> to the magical drinks. world of video games to them. There is so much more to do, but in partnership with yourselves, I'm sure that the best is yet to come. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget the award, man. Blimey, he almost forgot that. Also, the sun is there to like, like yeah. you know, run support. Yeah. <laughs> this bag, man. One of the most important parts of the gaming world is its supporting cast. I'll be right back. Anyone who's experienced okay. the vast worlds of San Andreas or Tamriel or Untitled Goose Game knows that these incredible places are only as good as the characters within them. Quick, to present um, the award for performer everybody share your favorite role, quote from the mask please welcome a brilliant actress before janet gets back of the walking dead we got to reminisce it's while we Elena can matsura uh, 1994's best film somebody stop me somebody says somebody stop me with a question mark smoking they say Producing a uh, that's a quote about the a movie whole family of people a wide I'm range green of now. talented individuals Ready to step up I'll and be create back. consistently Here's amazing results. And nowhere that, is that probably isn't that movie at some point. The massively talented this pen is royal blue. That's it. In the titles of this next category. You got me, partner. The nominees um, for performer in a supporting role It's me, the mask. Yep. <laughs> you guys are nailing performer it. Performer in a supporting role. The Deer Men? Sam Lake oh, Alex Sam Lake. Oh, interesting. Is Sam... If it's other industry people voting, do they vote for Sam Lake? That would be wild. His name was Stanley Ipkiss. That's right. She will rise. Tracy Wiles as Jahira. And call the of Ooh, Sam, this is an interesting one. Can Sam Lake so pull it off? At the ready, Harper. In this light, there will be victory. Ralph Einson. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, what did I miss? Uh, best supporting performance. Also, a lot of people are quoting the mask while you were gone. So, this is oh, it's best supporting performance. Oh, it's funny. That's hilarious. Sam Lake is nominated for this one. So, like, is the industry going to vote for him because he's also the director? It's going to be a tough call, right? Tony Todd as Venom. Yes, yeah, Sid is the coolest character in Sixteen. There's no doubt. Will he get more love than Sam Lake is the question. Or is he going to go to Baldur's Gate? This is what you want. Too much tongue and 
flexing yes. teeth in that guy. I gotta tell you. I don't like teeth. That's that like move. part of the uh, like. But they will it's like meant to make you against oh. us. I guess you're right. Deborah Wilson as Seer Junda. Deborah. Andrew Wincott. Two from Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I mean Baldur's Gate is such a game that. It is just about supporting. Well. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like designed to have those shine. To the very marrow of despair. That's when you come knocking on my door. A lot of Sid love in the chat. Will he take it? And the BAFTA goes to Andrew Wincott. Wow, all right. There we go, Bob J fans. One staircase. My, my, what manner of BAFTA is this? Ow, ow! It is a heavy one, it's true. Don't wake me up. This is, um... This is extraordinary. I've made a few notes. I don't know if they're in the right order. Nothing better than a British person saying extraordinary. Uh, Nothing better. I'll try and be as quick as I can. I mean, this is, it's just overwhelming. Uh, I mean, even to be nominated in the category with my fellow nominees and my fellow I wish I had a life where I could take on and off my glasses like that. Oh, wouldn't it be sweet? I would just be doing it for show. I can't you, see it. You can. Well, how, um, I don't do you know how many see, years it is take it off every once in a while just to session. give a good thinking look and then put it right back on. You'll be set. Um... I hadn't done motion capture before, and I, I turned up to uh, pit stop, and they said, yeah, you put your, your kit in the, in the locker. I said, what? My kit in the locker? Yeah, you put this, this um, Velcro bodysuit on. Excuse me? Um, and I mean, we, we were, we'd done all the tests, we were all set to go, the uh, sound was working, the avatar was behaving. Uh, and a fire alarm went off. <laughs> and out of nowhere, I was suddenly, with everybody from Pit Stop, standing on Croydon High Street <laughs> in the drizzle of a Monday morning. So this is glamour. People were walking past me. <laughs> oh, I've seen that, uh, that bodysuit in m and I must get one. <laughs> I went back to studio. We were fine. Uh, there was no fire. Only in the nine hells. Woo! But I have to thank everybody <laughs> at Pit Stop, the technical wizards, the directors, the movement coaches, who gave me the freedom to find the irony, the charm, and the danger of Raphael, the devil we love to hate, or hate to love. For me, it was a gift. It was um, a little liquid like returning to theater. Raphael is nothing if not theatrical. Don't bother me now. I'm an anti-hero from the 17th century. But every session was such fun at Pit Stop. Unbelievable. Even when it was wrong, it was, went wrong, it was fun. Hitmonchan says, damn, this guy is acting AF. Actors are acting, man. Look at it. There the Incubus Harlep. Um, I, think, I think there's an interesting you hamming it up Raphael in acting. To do what? There are quite a few pages. I spent yes, most but... of that session on my knees. <clears throat> Honestly, I wish we got more like, behind-the-scenes and stuff. And then came the these. song, like, really fun. Raphael's yeah. final act. Bobby, the creative genius behind the music. I know, I'm so jealous of people that have like, a nice I only, voice. <laughs> I only met Bobby last night. Wouldn't it be nice? For the first time. We'd collaborated. We spent an hour in a, in a session. We, uh, we recorded the song. He told me exactly what to do. He said, uh, do it like this. Do it like this. Breathe here. Uh, it, it, no more. You've got no less. The timing's not right. And then he said, right at the end of the session, they're, going, they're watching the clock. We have to, you know, come on. We've got to move on. And Bobby said, okay, we do it one more time. Now forget everything I told you. We do it one more time. We did it. And that was the, that was the one that was used. 
Uh, thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Um, very, very swiftly, I, I have profoundly and profusely to thank Larry and Sven. Thank you for this, uh, this, this opportunity. All the creative geniuses at Larry and Adam for writing Raphael, for giving him this uh, appropriately Baroque turn of phrase. Jason, the amazing cinematic, cinematics, thank you for, for this adventure. It's, uh, it's really been, been something. And thanks also to my amazingly supportive family, to my agent who has to put up with my increasingly demonic demands. And finally, I'd like to say thanks to the fans and followers of Raphael and Baldur's Gate 3 who have embraced this game from around the world and uh, have reached out to me with their own art, sometimes their writing. It's been really humbling how inspired they've been by this, by this game. I just say, please keep being creative. Keep creating these worlds, and maybe one day we'll learn to protect the one we're in. Final reflection. About 28 <laughs> years ago... <laughs> which coincidentally is the same year as Lara Croft. It's great to hear and see Shelley. I stood in a studio in South London with a lot of radio actors and voiced a game called Broken Sword. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The original Broken Sword. And I think it was the first game to use voice actors. I think it may have been released just fractionally before Lara Croft, but I'm not arguing. Um... <laughs> Well, that's but isn't lot. it amazing that here we are, we're seeing these games celebrated tonight. Thank you, BAFTA, for celebrating them. The kind of detail, the sophistication, the storytelling. How exciting to think what games could be doing in another 28 years. We'll all still even, be up here. It's just great Come to on, be a Jay, part you of can't, this conversation you can't make that and joke. this community. Thank you, BAFTA, for this honor. Um, Final words have really to go to Raphael, or almost Raphael's words. What's better than a BAFTA you don't know? A BAFTA you do. Thank you. Actors, Janet, can't live with them, can't live without them, you know what I mean? Again, you're the, I don't hate actors. You're the one that hates actors. The great thing about gaming no. is that it can be a family affair. Uh, unless you only have one controller Maybe it's like a love house, thing, like it comes back around or something. I think, I think this is so you gotta, you have, it's a fixation. But the title it is a fixation. this There's next no award showcase, the very best in family <laughs> entertainment. It's to on the back the of your baseball card. Family, mm -hmm. Please welcome two members of our BAFTA family, host of young game designers, Inel Tomlinson, and young presenter winner, Braden Bent. This is for the hip kids with this music. They're a little family. Gone are the days when gaming was the hobby of just the teenage members of the family. Modern gaming is something Raid that voice. everyone can enjoy. From the youngest yeah. members of the clan who love Mario to the elder statesmen who won't stop going on about Hogwarts. <laughs> And the games in this next award have managed to appeal to both of these and everyone in between. The nominees for family are... Best family in games. Family. <laughs> That's a funny voice. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. There's only two brothers oh, in this. Yeah, they're really leaning into the Mario. Family. Huh. Huh. Hi, now we're Rush. talking. It's the best Saturday morning cartoon game ever. Dave the Diver. Kids love diving. The yeah, family's always so interesting because, I mean, everyone's, fam everyone's family is different. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, like, I didn't play Disney any, like, Illusion Island. I don't know, family. Like, you know what I mean? It's like I was, when I was 
growing up on games, I wasn't like okay, with specifically family? looking for a family game. Yeah, well, you play that with your brother, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, here's a game we haven't seen yet. Hogwarts Legacy. All right, applause. All right. Just curious how the room's gonna read this one. But even then, I was playing single-player games. Sure. Well, just sure. next to somebody. The original stream, you know? Just watching someone in your Good house moment. play again. Yeah. And the BAFTA goes to... Very few subs. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Wow. Wonder, we're really tearing it up. Yeah, I think it's the multiplayer aspect. I mean, it's... I guess so. Inherently, like, it's inherently... Family. ...designed in there for, like... Yeah, again, fa family's so slippery. Some can be. Nice to see you again. Um, <laughs> on behalf nice of to the see you, everybody. in Japan, um, I'm accepting these awards um, and just sharing some of their words. The development right team there, included Super Mario various uh, gameplay mechanics <laughs> to allow oh. people to easily play together, regardless of their skill level, so there can be a sense of togetherness when people are helping one another playing the game. Even young players who might be trying their first Super Mario um, for the first time can enjoy playing this game together with their more experienced family members and friends or enjoy being helped by other players around the world online. We are honored to receive this family award. Thank you very much. What a day for this dude. Do you plan to carry your child through their games? Carry them? Yeah, I don't think there's a choice, right? You gotta. Our next award is He's going in a bubble immediately in Mario, if that's what you're asking. Public. Now, He's normally definitely when a you bubble guys vote on things, it ends very badly. <laughs> but thankfully, when it comes to games, you seem to know what you're talking about. To present the EE Player's Choice Award, please welcome the queen of streaming, it's Yami! Yami's here! Is she a special one? What the heck? Mm. It's a see-through one? I've, it may sound obvious, but the gaming industry relies on gamers. Is it made of gummies? You are the heart of any successful game. And ultimately, one of the best metrics for any title that there is, is the feedback from its players. Which is why it's such an honor to present the next category. The nominees for the EE Player's Choice Award are... EE e. Player's Choice. Oh, I guess because of the color. Okay. Like, why, is it, why is it 2077? So this was some online voting then. I'm curious to yeah. see. Which way are they going to go? Oh. Fortnite. Hmm. How would Fortnite do in a public poll, Janet? That's tough. I feel like it's, I had a lot of fun with Fortnite. Hey, me too. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Zelda, I, I'm, I'm pulling for Zelda. I think Zelda is a good I mean, We're both predicting. I don't really have a, a preference for what other people think. An opponent <laughs> in this race. I think I still do. The masses. Ooh, interesting. Lethal Company. Oh. Yee, okay. We got a ringer here. I did really like Lethal Company. Oh, you played it? Oh, you played it at Remap, Yeah, right? I got into it late, though. Yeah, at Remap, on, uh, I think, earlier this year. Baldur's Gate 3. Uh-oh. Oh, man. You I always forget about out. this one. Uh... I just... Where would the people go? I think... I mean, this is already the nominee. You know what I mean? So it's like, it speaks to sensibilities already. Yeah, this is tough. Marvel Spider-Man 2. Right. Okay, hold on. I no. do think... Ah, uh, God. I mean, I love this game. I don't, I don't think it's beaten Zelda for people's vote. Remember our poll, Jenna? Alan Wake conquered it in the Patreon poll. I'm going to go Tears of the Kingdom. I think you're right. I think you're right. And the award goes to... Baldur's Gate. Wow! Oh. All right. We look like fools! Sarah, I never said I thought it was Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Just so you know. I know you're watching this. Please, um, Sarah, have hi. mercy on our souls. <laughs> All right, that's when you can go up there and talk. Thank you, anonymous people. Can you get up over there? Oh, thank God. I thought he was going to a dead end. I was ready to get stressed. I'm always ready to get stressed. 
That was I do your... really want someone to wear it now, which is I know. dumb. But yeah, ever since you said it. David wasn't ready for this. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I kind of was, but you... Oh. Uh, plans change, as they do in game development. Um, so thank you, first of all. Uh, thanks for the people who voted for us. Uh, I was just thinking about how over a decade ago we started a Kickstarter campaign for Original Sin 1. Um, and we were basically trying to prove that this idea that we had to build a turn-based RPG was something that people really wanted to play, because uh, no one else would believe us. Uh, and I remember we were very uh, careful in saying, like, okay, when are we going to think that the campaign is successful? Let's take uh, maybe $100,000. Is that not too much? Maybe two hundred dollars or one hundred and fifty. dollars Eventually, we, uh, we got over a million dollars, which proves that uh, what we wanted to make is something that players wanted. And again, you have told us that we're making what you guys want. Thank you. Thank you very much. You might as well have just said, I'll be back. I'll be back to claim my real BAFTA prize. He's going to bonk his head down there at the little alley. Another BAFTA alumni story now. Two of our 2021 Breakthrough cohort joined forces on the mystical Mithrecht Ambrosia Island. Let's take a look. I'm Elle Osleywood, and I was named a BAFTA Breakthrough in 2021 for my BBC documentary, Special Characters, which I presented and co-wrote. That strand of hair is being a BAFTA perfectly crafted. feels like a big yeah. arrow pointing in the right direction. I also love being in a big creative cohort of ambitious, inspiring people. That's where I met Alex, the game designer behind the BAFTA-nominated title, Roki, which I was a huge fan of. I don't know Roki. We hanging out Do you know Roki? Vaguely. Uh, I didn't play taken, it, but I've, I've, and we started chatting. I've seen it. I was quite starstruck, but I hopefully didn't make too much of an idea myself. I messaged her afterwards a few weeks later I think it's to see if she needs to take on the role of Alex, the unlikely hero from from Mythrex, our next indie game. And of course, I jumped at the chance to work with a studio like Polygon Treehouse. And to our delight, she said yes, and things went from that. So the BAFTA nominations gave us a great deal of confidence to take our next steps as a studio. They're a great calling card for our work and what we do. Oh. And it allows us to keep on doing what yeah, we I do Yeah, I played this at GDC. To create enchanting yeah. worlds for the players to explore <laughs> and stories yep. to delight them. <laughs> well, I didn't want to put you on the spot, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Like, I felt like that, yeah, was like, hey, that's a, that's a door. You're if you take it. And, like, and really you took it. So you can't acknowledge my door and then not on. walk through the door either. Like, that's... Seems to have come on, come on, man. You're, you're quoting The Matrix it's without having seen The Matrix. It's so good. Well, I saw four, which is basically like seeing The Matrix. That's true. character. She's feisty. Um, that Matrix thing came out today or earlier. She has a little bit of work to do. On Rebap, too. It's a game about... New Horizons. Again, I'm like, maybe I should easy. I stop saving it for like one of you guys? I figured we could do content with it, but if like y'all yeah. don't want to do content, I'll just watch it yeah. back to back with the mask and then just call it, it a day. Oh, the event. ultimate double header. There you go. Ambrosia Island. Quality animation has the ability to wow, delight, Spider Man, delight, Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man. Spider -Man. For example, you might not realize this, but ah, I'm the GC talk got you. Huh, yeah, it, it, to it turns out swoops. it influences you. Wow, good memory. Hugs and please yeah. welcome to the stage from Game Again, Spot, if we're not retaining Bond, and using it back here, what was this all for? Generally, all your favorite you know? games-related yeah. channels. It's Lucy J. She's here. The most I'm animated woman in the industry. For the next several years. I don't know when I'm going back. Sure. Lucy, our dear friend Hello, Lucy. Lucy. Animation brings worlds and characters to life. Every movement, they make this look so easy. Sword swipes, I feel like Lucy is like expressions. one of the equal characters. 100%. 100%. Just right. This next category showcases some of the very best in the entire industry. The nominees for animation are. Yeah, they mentioned Giant Bomb with her, but I don't think they mentioned Giant Bomb with Tamar. Yeah, what was Tamar's tag? We just said Tamar saying everybody. Two. And then they made a fart sound, which I thought was weird. <laughs> I do feel like presenting a order would be really fun. High five. Yeah. Because you're, you're not up there that long. Yep. You just, you know, 
Yep, the right level of thrill. You, you don't have like, to sit there you know, and. You, do your little read, you don't get the stress. Off. I would still be like sweating though. Oh, yeah. Like, underneath it all. Profusely, but. But you don't have the stress <laughs> of like, am I going to win or am I not going to win? Like, there's no yeah. there's no room for disappointment there. Though I will say, if I had to present an award, I'm like, give me the earliest award there is. Oh, because then it's like, yeah. then I love doing something and then sitting in and just enjoying the fact that I already did this. Yep. Yep. Yeah, basically, I enjoy every moment except for the exact moment I'm doing something. <laughs> right. No, that's the way life works. Yeah. I think. If the stakes are high enough, you know, when it's low, like, I don't know, or like if it's a. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I think the, the issue with stuff like hosting and presenting is it, it is inherently a thing that happens less frequently. So you can never fully shake off the nerves. Mm, Versus yes. like what we do here, I know how you feel, but like podcasting, streaming, I'm like, oh, we do this all the time. Right, Every right, now right. and then I feel some nerves. But it's yeah. pretty rare. Like, we're always doing it. Yep. Yep. It still sticks up on you. I was nervous in the first half hour of this week's podcast for some reason. Really? Yeah. I kind of, isn't that so weird? That I, I forgot what, like a few weeks ago, I was like, oh my God, I'm really nervous. For this. I, like, <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I just, but it's like that excitement of like, too. Yeah. like the nerves more than nervousness. Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush. Way to go. Hell yeah. Come on, everybody. Awesome. Awesome. I know I shouldn't, but I keep forgetting that game was made in Japan. Okay, wow. <laughs> so, first of all, thanks to BAFTA and all the players who play the game. And personally, I would like to thank you to my wife, Vanessa, and my kids, Mia and Aiden, for the endless yes. support. And, you know, here we're just a bunch of guys receiving this award right now. But behind this and behind the game, there's like a whole team of really passionate animators who bring this game into reality. So this is for them, actually. And... <laughs> hey. Woo! Tango! And I know the rules, but just a quick word for the in-game lead animator also, Hoichi. So he doesn't speak English at all, but he will try. He's going to try to speak so yeah. much Yeah! <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like, I'm going to try. I'm going to take a stab so... at this. Gosh. Thank you, BAFTA. In Hi-Fi Rush, thinking, thinking animations to music was a challenging task, but it was made pos possible thanks to the animation team and everyone involved. Thank you so much. <laughs> Nailed it! That was, that was crowd awesome. goes wild. I, here's my issue with, like, speaking another language. Yes. I like feel like when I'm speaking, I don't even know. I I don't even know if I know if I've messed up. You know what I mean? When you're speaking English, I don't know it. Hmm? Now, oh, the I other love language. Me some yeah. Gaming hmm. music. Because I, I don't. I mean, tell you how many I know what the pinnacle sounds like. But like, how far? Am, how far is my gap? Like, what does it sound like to mm. someone who's completely fluent? And this next award shows, in the last 12 months, there have been some incredible pieces of music filling up our little ear holes. To present the award for music, Can't please welcome stage. the composer behind everything from Spider Man Across the Spider Verse to Little Big Planet. It's Daniel Pemberton. I didn't know that was connected. Interesting. Welcome, Daniel. Hey, what a great audience tonight. Uh, it's actually, as much as I love, you know, big faceless corporations. <laughs> I love more the artists behind these games and them being spotlighted here at BAFTA. That is really very special. So thank you for that, BAFTA. Very few people really understand <laughs> the complexity of writing music for video games. Creating a memorable soundtrack that transport you, transports you to another world is difficult enough. But add that the demands that that can alter, adapt, and interact. I like his in energy. Time, it feels very like refreshing. Make it one yeah, of the most yep, challenging forms of modern music. In like a, in like a subtle way. Yep. And is I want to fall asleep on his. Clothes. The following works, maybe it's the, maybe it's the color of the suit. Like, have you looked? Mm. At, well, have you? Are you familiar with the like color? For music the color are. analysis. No. It's like where it's like they look at like your undertones and like the colors of like music. your hair and your eyes and stuff, and they match you up with like a season and like the best colors, like the colors you look best in, that help oh, you. Oh, like, that's about your eyes and hair. I thought that was just like it, pick a season. It's, it's about your undertones too. The undertones is the big. What's thing. an undertone? Um. So like, if you were to like, it's the color that's underneath. 
the My color skin? of the skin. So like if you think what? of drawing, you know, when you draw someone's flesh, Alan you're not just drawing one color, right? There's like sure. multiple colors layered that create the palette that you look like. So those colors are your underpants. I'm so confused about what you're talking about. Like, I know, like, when you're making, like, a 3D model of a face, you have to, like, yeah. model stuff underneath, but... It's like that. That's how You're modeling, like, works. multiple Star layers of the skin. Mm -hmm. It's, like, why everyone's, like, think about, you know, even... Well, like, again, you're kind of hitting the foundation out that often, but, like, so. why are there all those tones, right? Like, people can get categorized into, like, a set of colors, but each color has deviations in it, like sliders, huh. you know? Huh. So color theory is about like looking at that specific color and then matching it with like complementary colors Assassin's to make you like pop instead of like wash you out. Huh. Yeah. So you're saying that guy's and color was blue? It might be because he really popped in that. I feel like that sure. might be his color. I think anyone would pop in that though. You're saying some no. people? Really? That's surprising Correct. to me. Maybe only if you have taste you can Zelda see who's popping and who's not popping. Kingdom. You have really have to develop the eye. I don't have the eye. I'm not okay. like I can't do my own color analysis. I, I, I want to get it done. I think I'm just going to face it. Sure. Eventually. Because I'm like, I don't know how to tell. Like, I can't tell. Here we it's go. It's the thing where they put the sheets of color on you, and they're like, oh. That's not a thing. Yeah, we don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. And the best it goes to. <laughs> I'm just saying words, you know. Borders Gate 3. Wow. Killing it. See, I can't analyze the color. That's the thing. We should go get our colors done for Neutral Plus. Which that's a life thing? Hack, then I can expense getting my color done. All right. I'll write it down. So I just Google okay. where to get my colors done <laughs> in Minneapolis. I, know, I guess I have to ask the people to get live stream it. Yeah. Like live stream getting your color done. Yeah. I would go. That's, I would go do that. Sarah would be into that, right? I think so. She's, a, she's a spring. If she wasn't. Or she'd be like, oh, I don't. Everyone. I think she'd be into it. Obviously, I'm of course. overwhelmed. <laughs> if, if somebody told me 20 years ago that I would be here with you, beautiful people, I wouldn't believe it. So the very first thing I would like to say is thank you to the BAFTA Academy and the BAFTA Games members for recognizing the video game music as an art in, in its own right. Thank you so much. Wow. Right on, man. I would like to say Thank you from the bottom of my heart to our director, Sam Vinke, who is genuinely the most caring person I've ever met in my life. He cares about the games we make. He cares about his people. And most importantly for me, he, even though he had no idea why I was sinking down by the river, <laughs> he trusted me from the start to the finish. So thank you, Sven, for your... That's so sweet. That's so that sweet. That song is so good. Yeah. Like, instant classic. Yep. I would like also to say thank you to, to the music team, to my friends and colleagues, Victor, Georgi, Dari, and to all the beautiful musicians that left a piece of their heart in the music, because I believe that if you don't leave a piece of your heart in the music, nobody can enjoy it, and nobody can truly understand the feelings that were running through your heart during the composition process. And at the end, I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you in this room for making this special moment in my life. Thank you so much. Whoa, that is sweet. <laughs> Janet, we need to be more emotional. Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten that feedback before. <laughs> I don't think we should start now. <laughs> He's gonna go explode in the back room. Yeah, I think. Well, what, what are you saying? We just, well, just cry congratulations every, to all our on? winners so far. Give it up for everybody. Yeah. I think you cry when you, you know, you're moved. You finally gotta cry. We are going to take yeah, that was a really moment nice. now to remember some of the individuals of the games industry who are sadly no longer with us. Hmm. Let's pay tribute to their lives their unique talents and the, music, the incredible sound design, legacy top tier they have left us categories. through so their fun. work. Oh, wow. Live music, good touch for this segment. That's a yeah. really smart idea. And after the music category, really nice smart. placement. This is 
is interesting. Are they going to put names up, do you think? Or is it just like... I, th I think so. It'd be kind of cool if they didn't. Just like, if you know somebody, remember them during this chunk. It's interesting. They keep on flushing, flushing by. And we keep dropping into the night. It's a late goodbye. Such a late goodbye. This way. You don't leave anybody out this way. Yeah, that's true. Greg says, as a British person, I should stress how big BAFTA is here. It's genuinely second only to winning an Oscar for film, and it's massive for gaming. That's, that's so sweet. in Max Payne 2. Interesting. Thank you, This Way Out. It's late, goodbye. Oh, there we go. Uh, my Poets of the Fall. Good old picture of John Gibson. interesting to do a song from Max Payne. Oh, but yeah, yeah. But considering, you know, the voice actor from Max Payne. I think they probably just picked the... Oh, I don't know. I wonder, if it, I wonder if it's connected. I don't think it's connected. I imagine they just picked it. Really? It's a song they want to use. It happened to be also used again. Okay. There we go. Nicely done. Thank you to Aaron, Julie, and Daniel for that beautiful performance of Late Goodbye from Max Payne. Oh, okay. Our next award is Game Beyond Entertainment. 
This award celebrates those games that go above and beyond just simply entertaining us. The games that move us politically or socially and stay with us. To present the award for Game Beyond Entertainment, please welcome a recent BAFTA breakthrough voiceover artist who I've spent an unhealthy amount of my year listening to. You'll know her as Karlak from Baldur's Gate 3. It's Samantha Bayard. She's here. Bring the room back up, Samantha. Pressure's on. They all hold it the same way. They must be coached to hey, do that grip. How are we doing? Yeah, that's probably recommended us, at least. Games have the power to change us. They can shift attitudes, introduce us to new experiences and perspectives, and help to bridge divides between us. And the titles in this category have certainly done just that over the that last Vivian West months. That Vivian Westwood necklace is really contained really within is terror out. and beauty. There's a name for that necklace. And hope. Yeah, it's the brand the designers Vivian Westwood. Wow. Unrelenting the brand joy of it. The nominees for Game Beyond Entertainment are Game Beyond Entertainment. We are Worm Drama. Oh yeah. Goodbye Volcano High. I think uh, Haley was really into this. She was, yeah. I think Jacob liked it too. Chance of Senar. Chia. Heck yeah. Ah, Centipede Man. Crazy game. I was on the best like side content in a game. Just for a little dinking around stuff? Yeah, like it was just really enjoyable to do the little the Tara little like yeah. Do a completion to play that game. Look out! Our hometown. Thirsty suitors. Full of gossiping on games, parental expectations, and your cost of stakes. Shout out to everybody who supported us on Patreon for a window there and got a code for Thirsty Suitors. It was nice of that team to share hundreds and hundreds of codes. And the BAFTA goes to Chia. Hey, awesome. Is Phil going to be there? Oh, no. Interesting. They're not wrong. It really is very heavy. Um, I had Check a out our uh, new show plus of How Much Stuff Weighs, if you're interested Crepo, in who <laughs> yes. is the weight of objects. Game director Great. Always be blocking And Jim. also the co-founder <laughs> at Awaseb. And he had a <laughs> list of people that he would like me to thank. Uh, so I will try and remember them all for you now. Uh, to begin with, he wanted to thank Thierry and Marie-Lou and the entire Awaseb family who... I am confident are watching today all in a group together, so congratulations. He also wanted me to thank Alexi Garavarian and everyone at Kepler Interactive. He wanted me to thank the partners, uh, Epic and also Sony PlayStation for their support. Uh, and he also wanted me to thank BAFTA for having this award, for celebrating this creative endeavor and to thank all of the nominees as well. So with that, I just have to say thank you, merci, and Oletti. There we go. Cool. Beyond entertainment. But also entertaining, in parentheses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> time for another BAFTA alumni story. This time about an upcoming game from previous BAFTA winner, Zyber, Zyber Scott who created one of 2020's most celebrated games, Kind Words. He's here to tell oh, us yeah. about its hotly anticipated sequel, Kind Words 2. 
So this is kind of an interesting way to do it, where there is a slight aspect of looking I, forward, but it's through the lens of previous winners. Boston, yep, that is a smart idea. Just kind of like in adds a layer of incentive to like being part of the Beyond Entertainment BAFTA for our you know, game. alumni is how they refer to it. No? Use the same language. Kind Words is a game about writing nice letters to people. What is worrying you or stressing you out, and you post it anonymously online for everybody to see. It really connected with people. They put anything that you could imagine wanting to share with people into this game. It's been a journey for us to try and understand where do you go from there. Winning the BAFTA enhanced my ability to connect to all these people that I didn't know before. For example, Katerine and Ellen, who made my child's Lebenborn, another BAFTA winner. But we had a lovely call together and chatting about what can games do in this space. We're hoping that Kind Words 2 is going to be able to provide uh, beautiful, safe, plentiful connections. And there's all these uh, little players walking around that you can talk to. You can say, hi, how are you, to anyone. That's, <laughs> in a way, what the BAFTAs uh, have done for That's me art. by connecting me. And it's, in a way, what we're trying to do with Kind Words 2 is to provide everybody with connections, with strangers all over the world in the hopes that some of them will just change you or them a little bit for the better. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> Lo-Fi City Pop, is that part of the official name, you think? Ooh. Our next category is Technical Achievement. Uh, I think by which I don't mean something that's actually. only technically okay. an achievement, like when I eat five bowls of ramen in one go. These are achievements in the technical arts. Brilliant games require brilliant minds to make them work, and behind every blade of grass, every perfect sunrise, and every exploding goblin head is an incredibly talented creative working incredibly hard. The next award celebrates the best in technical achievement of the last 12 months. And to present the award, co-founder of Black Twitch UK and this year's Games London Ensemble, it's Ebonix. <laughs> It's written in parenthetical on the Steam page. A little five city pop. But I, that might just be specific to Steam. I've noticed some games. Mm. Is a parenthetical a subtitle? Is what? Is a parenthetical a count parenthetical? as a subtitle? Um, no, it's probably just... The, the technical title, aspects of gaming is the industry's unsung hero. Without the technical talents of some of the nominees in this next award, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the crisp, high-performing powerhouse titles that have hit our consoles and PCs over the last 12 months. The nominees for technical achievement are... It's gotta be Zelda? What do you think? I think Zelda will be there. Technical achievement. This art looks like it's from Anthem. Starfield. Okay. You're part of Constellation. Part of our family. Final oh, Fantasy hearing this music 16. again, so good. I went to a GDC panel about this, and they just played one of the trailers from 16 at the top of it, and I was like, the Legend of Zelda. It reminded me about everything I loved about that game, just sitting down in a big crowd and watching that trailer again. Yeah. There was a ridiculous amount of things happening in Alan too. <laughs> that is true. Marvel Spider-Man 2. God damn. Oh, look at that shot. It's so insane. That was the right clip. Horizon, mm. of the Interesting choice. Interesting choice. I still have to finish this. Everyone on Earth does. Except for Kyle. He finished it, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think he did. I don't remember. I got pretty far along. You want to do a spoiler cast for it? <laughs> it's just like... Oh, <laughs> man. Down. It'd be interesting. And Maybe the when, when Jeff to... returns or something. When Jeff returns. The Legend of Zelda there we go. Tears of the Kingdom. Here we go, buddy. Pressure's on. I feel like Tears of the Kingdom has some of the like widest range of player independence within a single player campaign. 
very honored to be receiving yeah. this award it's on behalf of different of angles from Japan. Yeah. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom features new mechanics huh? such as Ultra Hand and Fuse, which allow players to combine in game objects this is back of the box. almost any way uh, they can think of. On the technical side, the development yeah, I mean, team works play Jason extremely says, hard. Yeah. How did this game run the on the Switch? It is wild. As enjoyable. That game is running on the Switch as, as well as it does. As satisfying as possible. Thank you again, BAFTA, for these awards. Thank you so much. There we go. That guy's underneath his chair. It's just a pile of BAFTAs at this point. Our final BAFTA alumni story is about the team behind Hellblade. The haunting game oh. is back with Senua's Saga Hellblade that, uh, 2. So let's hear from May 23rd, and end of May. This is shaping up to be a good one. I believe. I'm Don Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory. Hi, my name is Melina Jurgens, and I play Senua and Hellblade. I am Ninja Theory's character performance 21st. ninja. And the winner yeah. is... Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade. 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 Senua's wow, Sacrifice. popping up. It was incredible. We went to the awards with uh, a few nominations, and we were hoping that maybe we could win one award. So when we won that first award, it was uh, amazing. Games can aspire to and achieve a remarkable exploration That's the psychologist of, uh, they consult with. the state of the mind and the state of mental suffering. It's been a real pleasure and a real honor to be part of this. I think mental health how much time I've left to play this before the next one. So I'm trying <laughs> to like line them up. Games are just oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Just entertainment. It's not too long, that first one. impact on people's yeah. lives. They're just a medium I know, uh, that can Haley, help you stick more. Yeah, wanted to play through it too. Yeah, I, think she, I think she might be done with it. Oh, did you? Left people thinking and feeling was really fantastic. Well, that was when one of we our issues, like trying to line up. Suddenly, it's like, oh, do you hold it and then you try to different. We ended like at the same time. Outside like, of yeah. games, where people to started to pay attention that. to not just help by center or sacrifice, but I think other games, other games that have stories to tell. So, Senua Saga Hellblade 2 it takes Senua to 10th century Iceland where she fights to free her people from slavery. Senua is still experiencing psychosis, but she has grown to better understand her unique perspective. And it's a game in which we're really pushing into the things that we care about. Cinematic immersion, beautiful presentation, and telling a story that takes you on that very personal journey, all in service of immersing players in Senua's new world. Unlike film or, or literature where you're a spectator, games give you that opportunity to see the world through someone else's eyes and help to understand the world as they see it. It's weird to have the Hellblade 2 part as kind of the subtitle. Uh, how many sequels have done that? The focal point of most good games is the lead character. Whether it's a slick martial arts expert, a deadly secret Everyone's agent, Everyone's worried about their graphics card with that one. Mouth that eats cherries. What an mm, enigma. That's funny. To present the award for performance in a leading and role, console, please welcome just... an actor who knows a little something it is what it is, about you know? roles. Mm -hmm. The fabulous Why the cage bird David sings. Harewood. Inch, 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 Mr. Dork, Mr. Dork. Uh, the lead role in a game is vital. It's how the players view the entire world. And as this next category shows, in the last 12 months, we've been treated to some phenomenal lead performances from some of the most talented members of the industry that we've ever seen. The nominees for performance in a leading role are... Performer in a leading role. The flavor is exquisite as spiced wine. Amelia Tyler as narrator. Interesting. The narrator as a leading role is an interesting angle. Me, my dad. Naji Jeter as Miles Morales. They were here. It's like the end of the game. I love Miles. They want us to help people, to fight. I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Neil Newbond as a stereo. Love me a good vampire, Janet. The Asterian stands. Many are lined. They're lining up. Plentiful. Oh, you know? yeah. Let me walk my own path. They just to share everybody's saddest scene. That's Cameron how this Monaghan works. As Cal Kestis. You taught me what it truly means to be a Jedi. 
Thank you, Mr. Cobble, for the big sub on Twitch. Samantha Bayard. Wow. Come back out, Samantha. In this world I love so much, it's all I could really ask for. You hear me? These last few days. <laughs> it's just the saddest scenes. This is acting, baby. Thank you for everything. What do you think? Um, someone from Baldur's Gate, right? Uh, maybe a Syrian? And the BAFTA goes picks. to... Naji Jita. Wow, Naji. all right. Ooh. There we go. Fun fact, I think this is his second win then? Second time nominated for sure. Put the cheat sheet I love that he always does it with the camera. It's nice. He knows where his camera is. And Miles, someone say the best part of the game. Fair. You know? Fair. Whoa. I'm an MJ I, uh, man myself. Definitely did not expect this. And definitely do not have any notes written because, I mean, going my big bro and my other big bro, Neil, Nert, Yuri, it's crazy. I mean, I did not expect this at all. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you, God. Thank you, my family. Thank you, Insomniac, Sony, Marvel. I mean, it takes a village and a team to, you know, get this job done. And you all know the hard work that it takes. And, uh, whew, yeah, yeah. First time in London. Y'all look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Now I got to figure out how to pack this. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Yeah, the carry-on clock is crazy. Did this. you see it? Did you see it happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. You have to, are you going to do it? You said you'd chug your water. It's the when big one. The... Best game. <sighs> I didn't get through all of it. There's a lot of fizz. The award that celebrates oh. the height of achievement. In I tried, everybody. I tried. This is the final God. hardest boss. He's used of to wearing masks. Of course he does it. Dr. Robotnik, the Bowser, the any enemy in Elden Ring. Whew. The games in this category are all extraordinary. If it were up to me, I'd give them all the award. Uh, but it isn't up to me. And if it were, that would be a waste of everyone's time. To present the award for best game, please welcome an industry legend, the man behind <laughs> titles like Doom, Wolfenstein, and Quake. He's a legend. Yeah, and only, man, he's a John legend. Romero. It's your John, whatever you do, don't put the mask on. I can't chug that much fizzy water. Oh. But nobody cared who he was until he put on his mask. <laughs> What's that from? Thank you. Thank you. Is that a thing? What an honor it is to be here tonight. What? What's that the from? scope and scale of talent on show in this evening ceremony um, is now I'm <laughs> been mind blowing. <laughs> I use it all the time. And if this is know, what we're served, <laughs> I use what it all the time. Yeah, I just dark night, right? Dark night rises. People it. say. It's oh, it's from, from the, the mask. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's Obviously. the closing the line from the mask. Achieve something special. <laughs> they all have that. Right. It was Bane. That's why I couldn't. I'm like, unknowable quality. You do kind of feel like Bane. First, pick up a controller. From small indies to AAA titles, all of the games nominated in this final award share one thing. We players know that they will all stand the test of time and will be enjoying them for years to come. The nominees for best game are... Here we go. The it's biggie. wild that's so like, just, just best game. There it is. Like, you know, best game. it's so definitive. Yep. We'll tell you. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. And this is forever binding. Whatever wins, we'll change Mimax's award to. Lot of Baldur's Gate love in the chat. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it, I think it, that is the, the favorite. Yeah. In terms of like what is, you know, Vegas odds. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun though if the uh, Spider-Man took it? Sure. I always I always like when awards show, I like the differentials between award shows on like yeah. what gets what where. Yep. It's fun to see. Don't stop writing. Cool game. Wow. And they're kind of Dave the Diver. Well, just some love for Remedy sneaking in. Super 
Mario Brothers Wonder. Ba, 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 da, ba. Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, bringing the house down. Bringing the house down. And the BAFTA goes to, yeah, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. There we go. Mopping up, baby. Looks like Spider-Man got that win with the Miles, at least. Eh? I know. I'm glad that too. Woo, doggy. It's Baldur's Gate 3's world. We just love it, you know? Mm-hmm. Been saying it for years. Man, that is that is a sweep. Everybody, come on up. Everyone who played it, come on up. People really want Sven to be wearing that armor. I know. It was just such a good moment. <laughs> Get out of here, John. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. We we brought a bit of team. <laughs> we'll wait for them to be here. That's classy. I do like that guy confirming that like Sven is as good as he seems. Like that's a really nice angle for that speech. Come on. That's awesome. Now do a line kick. Is that what that's called, Janet? I think so. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you, everybody. Um, I still can't believe we're standing here. The, you look at the footage of all the games that have been nominated, and they, they look so fantastic. And I, I look at every single image of, of the game that we've made, and I know how much work went into it, how much effort the team put into every single microsecond of this incredibly large, large game that took us so long to make. Um, it's a testament to their incredible talent. They're representatives of almost all of our departments. Uh, so. Uh, there are a lot of people who put a lot of effort, a lot of heart and soul, uh, really a lot of themselves into uh, making Baldur's Gate 3. So this is amazing. Uh, so I want to thank our team. Uh, I want to thank uh, our friends uh, and family who supported us through what were sometimes really, really hard times. Uh, our partners who have been amazing. There's really a truckload of partners that helped us make this game. We didn't do this on our own. It's like a, I once counted it. I came at over 2,000 people that worked on Baldur's Gate Whoa. 3, which is incredible, over six years. Um, I'm forgetting people to thank, but uh, or actors, because there's so many of you that are sitting here in the audience that are here uh, that have spent so much time in those suits and stand on Croydon High Street. Uh, so, uh, so thank you, thank you very much. This is super appreciated. You're and you look fantastic. Thank you. Take care. There we go. Whenever I clap like that for like, you know, when you train with like talent or in an audience, like, I always think of the, the end of like Blue Play Smash Bros. and the other the characters were like, you know? Yep, reluctantly yeah. giving it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did that start, I wonder? I think Melee, right? I'm trying to think. I don't think Melee has it. I think it's a brawl thing. Melee has it. Do you think? 100%. 100%? That's pretty There's damn no high. no doubt in my mind. Zero doubt in your mind? Correct. Okay. All right, like Chet, I'm right, right? Well, that doesn't sound like a 100% kind of question. You I can mean, say I it. want confirmation because you can't confirm because you don't know. Okay. okay. So that's what, you know, um, yeah, I, I yeah, if I played an obscene amount of hours in that game. Look, I played an obscene amount of hours is for Melee as well. It's a Melee thing for I sure. I promise really. you I played more hours than you did. That's an interesting question, Janet. Well, there we have it. Know. That was the 2024 BAFTA Games we'll Awards. after. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations to all of tonight's winners, but also everyone who was nominated. You have all raised gaming to a whole new level, and you should be extremely proud. Give yourselves Chat a round of applause, totally please. Right. And personally, I cannot wait to see what advancements you have in store for us next year. Even quicker quick saves. 
haptic constructive feedback, <laughs> a loading screen that tells you how you're going to die, nano transactions, anything is possible <laughs> in this industry. Thank you again to all of our partners for your continued support. And BAFTA is also proud to partner every year with the London Games Festival, which in 2024 has reached its ninth edition. Yo! It has been truly an honor to be a host tonight. This year's ceremony is now over. But remember, you can now select New Ceremony Plus. Solid jokes, solid jokes. And start the whole jokes. thing again with any awards you've won, but my jokes will be harder to understand. <laughs> I'll see you all at the after party. Shelley Blonde is taking us all back to Croft Manor, and we're going to lock a butler in the freezer. It's so this fun. guy gets game in Janet. For now, thank you all for coming, and thank you all for watching online. I'm Phil Wang, and until next year, good night. Lovely. Do, do, do. Super cut. Super cut. Everybody, man, they turned this oh, around. Yeah, fast. I, I played that game for like at least maybe a year straight every single day. That's <laughs> like. And who's your main? I didn't have a main. I would do 64 man melee with just my brother. It would take hours. Oh my to God. Um, we tried doing it as adults, like for the nostalgia, and realized it was obscenely long amounts of time. Yeah. Maybe it was shorter when we were kids because maybe he beat me faster or something, Oof. or I don't know. But uh, yeah, so it would just be, I just ever, put everyone in there. I think we didn't. We usually didn't put. Sometimes we wouldn't put the ones we hated. Like we hated playing ice climbers. Yep. We hated playing. Um, I might have been the only one that was like a. Hey, no one wants this person in here, right? Like. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, there were a couple like ones that wouldn't make the selection. Sometimes we'd do them themed, like, you know, um, just like, like there was what, there's like Pikachu, and then there's a couple of Pokemon characters in that, right? Oh yeah, you get Pikachu. So it'd be like, maybe that could be like a theme. You know, we do some theme ones sometimes, oh, yeah. but yeah, and it would just be like any, any stage, random rotation. So yeah, I was obsessed with that game, and I was obsessed with Mario Party 4. Um, the two finest. Is that the microphone one? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know, because I didn't play, like, all, I know there were, like, a million for the GameCube. I only played four. Okay. But, like, those were my two favorite games at the time. Every single day, I would ask my brother if we could play one of those two games. Um, in exchange, that's also why I learned how to play Madden that year. So he's like, we're going to be playing all this. We got to right. throw some Madden in here. You got to play Madden with me. And I got decent at Madden enough to play for real. Um, and that's what I did for that section of my life. That's a beautiful journey. Well, hey, this section of our lives... Uh, thanks everybody for watching uh, BAFTA Awards. This is the first time I've ever uh, sat through it. That was a lovely, classy award show. What'd you think, Janet? Yeah, yeah it was cool. Um, some really heartfelt speeches. Um, I liked the general like pacing and presentation. I think yeah. the tosses to the alumni was like really fun. Yeah, so, smart um, idea. Yeah, shout out to everyone that won, got to take stage. Um, it's always interesting, again, the different approaches, too, of, like, the pre-writes, the little stories, the off-the-cuff. Um, yeah, it's good to see people who make good things get awarded. Absolutely. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching with us. Uh, we'll be back for more reactions in the future. Let's send you over to Nextlander for everybody watching live on Twitch. They're playing a little Planet Crafter, so that seems like the right, right tone to shift the whole thing hey, over to. Industry. But hey. thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Right now. Thanks, YouTube. Mm -hmm.